defense made a motion for a mistrial. Prosecutor was up to some fuckery. Potentially damaging evidence, no basis for it. The judge specifically said, do not ask that question. Do not use that as evidence. She walked right down the path and asked the question. It may be over on Tuesday morning. Batman Bruce Wayne bitch snitch. Gerald Brooks, your constitution does not apply to me because I'm a sovereign citizen, a traveler on the land. I the Korean Empire or whatever bitch snitch. Because there's so fucking absurd. If you want to be a sovereign citizen, just do yourself a favor first. Go to YouTube here and binge again. Every sort of sovereign citizen that's ever been recorded. Find me one that you want. God dang, you're right. Don't go down this. It's not the Some clever dick on the internet didn't find the great loophole in all of the world's law. Bitch snitch. God dang, you're right. God dang, you're right. Traveler on the land. Empire Traveler on the land Bitch snitch Moorish Empire God dang, you're right Traveler on the land Bitch snitch Oh no, not not yet. I can't, I can't do this yet. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hi, I'm Legal Vices, and this is our little old channel we like to call Legal Vices. Um, yeah, it's Saturday morning for me, which means it's the morning after last night. Uh, <laughs> oh my lord, this is gonna, this is going to be fun. We've got a bunch of stuff to cover today. And by bunch, I mean three. <laughs> three things we've got to cover today is the order for uh, Laura Owens to turn over all of her medical records. We have that order to discuss. We have the uh, the response to the motion to compel lunch. <laughs> <laughs> which that that's 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 fun and we also have uh laura owens complaining about clayton's lawyer and her own lawyer those are the three things that we've got to discuss now what uh what i want to do is go through and read read the orders read the motions or we read the read the orders, read the response, and read the bar complaint. I guess the is the proper way to say that. I want to read those and then go back and start reading through the the exhibits. the The exhibits are actually the fun part, but the important part is what's in the bodies of the main documents. So that's kind of how I that's how I plan on on doing it. We'll see how far and uh, and how how much we get through because we. We may be we may be interrupted by people <laughs> as the uh, as the, as my morning and your afternoon or evening or whatever goes on. Whew. All right, let's, well, let's, if you're if you're coming on the replay crew, you know, skip ahead another five or ten minutes because uh, we we do we do talky stuff here. We wait for people to come in. We sort of build it up a little bit. We have a little fellowship and philosophizing before we go. Plus, I just need time to get my head screwed on. Like I said, it was, it's today is the morning after the night before. <laughs> uh, I was on Ozzy Overlord's stream with the uh, with a bunch of people, and and his his wife his his wife joined the stream for uh, a bit. Well, I guess it was like for the whole thing, but I was there for a bit. 
And then about 10 o'clock, my 10 p.m. my time, the my a couple of my friends were like, hey, come out for drinks for a couple of hours. I said, okay, I'll come out for a drink for drinks for a couple of hours. And then at 4 a.m. ish, 4 a.m., a little after 4 a.m., I have no idea. I can't remember. And I just can't be bothered to look right now. I guess I could look at my tweet and see what time <laughs> what time I sent out my tweet. Uh, I ended up in a really a really wild taxi ride home. Uh, so it's according to my, uh, it was exactly 4 a.m. That's right. Yeah, it was exactly 4 a.m. Uh, where's, where's the link to my own tweet? You guys have got to see this taxi. This is, I mean, I was in, I was in no condition to appreciate this taxi. Um, right, uh, hang on. There, I'm going to say there's going to be some, probably be some, uh, boomer moments because my my reflexes my my motor skills are are not quite recovered yet and if i'm squinting it's because i'm i'm in the process of hydrating the hell out of myself to avoid a, a deadly well not to avoid a deadly hangover just to uh to soothe a deadly hangover i guess is probably the proper word for it um yeah and my friend's like oh come on we'll, we'll go out to saturday it's saturday morning here says, oh, let's go out to saturday night we'll have more drinks on yeah no i think i'm I think I'm good for the weekend. This is the <laughs> this is the taxi I was in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got in the taxi. And I'm like, oh, I am, I am not, I am not ready for this. <laughs> yeah, this it was. Dude had a lava lamp in his taxi, uh, <laughs> and then the, the the constellation lights and the the the, the Milky Way thing was going on. He's he's got this uh he's got these two like neat like uh, LED tubes and the, he said like he's got the lava lamp. He's oh my lord, it was the it was it was interesting. <laughs> But I, I did. I did reach home safely. I have both of my kidneys. Um, nothing on my body hurts where it shouldn't hurt. So I. I guess it was okay. All right, my motor. Come on, screen. I need like an intuitive screen at this point that that does what I want it to do, not what my flailing fingers are telling it to do. All right. <clears throat> yeah. So that was my that was my taxi ride home. <laughs> Now, see, I, everybody's talking about this cash cab, and I have no idea what the cat, what this cash cab thing is. You're all talking about. There was there was a lot of that going on in the comment section of, of my Twitter, which is the illegal vices over there at Twitter. But uh, it sounds like it might be right, <laughs> but I don't. I didn't get any. I didn't get any cash out of it. Yeah, Flex is the Wonderland cab. All right. Well, let's see. Right now, what do we got? We've got 328 people here. That's enough. Let's let's get started. We're nine minutes in, so uh, we'll do the like and subscribe stuff for one minute. Then we'll hit the ground running and wait to see if who, if anybody, or what, what if anything, uh, happens and shows up. The the, uh, uh, the there was a last minute swamp posse sign like the the bat sign it was like the swamp posse sign there was like a little bundle of sticks and leaves i projected onto the clouds a few minutes ago to to summon the the pond scum posse but it was all last minute so i don't know who it or whether anyone will show up but i decided i i need some help with this <laughs> oh god it's 10 o'clock in the morning here and uh, i just i just woke up and it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a while for me to hit my stride the Cash Cab is a hilarious taxi show. All right. It's a TV. I, yeah, I figured it was a TV show. It's a game show. I figured that much. I'll have to check it out later. But all right. Let's do our like and subscribe poll. We've got 379 people here and 202 likes. That's pretty good. More than half of you have done your job. That's actually a surprise, but almost half of you haven't. So get on down there. Smash that like button. Like it. Like it now. And hit the subscribe button if you have not already done so. I would be, I would be thrilled, honored, and pleased if you would consider subscribing to my channel costs you nothing. And it makes me all warm, fuzzy, and happy. We're marching toward 76,000 subscribers. We need to do that. We need 76,000. Then it's going to be 77 on our way to hundred thousand and our super little awesome silver play button, which is going to go right there, right there next to Artorias from dark souls. Uh, that's, that's where the play button will go. Um, 
Yeah, so hit the like, hit the hit the subscribe button if you this is subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button, and if you have not, if you already have hit the subscribe button, just please double check to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube unilaterally unsubscribes people. Don't know why, but they do. So do do that, and then come over here and take our like and subscribe poll. Our like and subscribe poll today is what is going on. Uh, no clue is your first answer. <laughs> no clue what's going on. Our second choice is justice for Clayton is going on. And the uh, the wrestling meme, if, if what's going on, the tonsil twins are still real to me, damn it. And then Su- whatever happened to Susan Powder? If, if any of you are like old enough and, and uh, American enough to remember the old Susan Powder's uh, infomercials, or it's like, you can eat two slices of cheese, or you can eat 47 baked potatoes, and they have the same amount of fat in them. Uh, if you remember her, her her big deal was, stop the insanity. I wonder what ever happened to Susan Powder. Okay, this is what you get. This is what you get. Hangover, hangover ADD hasn't been subdued yet. Susan Powder, P-O-W-T-E-R, I believe is how she spelled her name. Uh... 66 years old, living, her her husband's name, is, well, she's divorced now, apparently. Her husband's name was Lincoln Apeland, like A-P-E-L-A-N-D. All right, her husband was Lincoln Apeland. Susan Patterson, Australian-born American. I didn't know she's Australian. She doesn't have an Australian accent. Huh. Her catchphrase, stop the insanity, the centerpiece of her weight loss infomercial. She hosted her own talk show, The Susan Powder Show, in 1990. All right, I hope she's still alive. She's still she's still around. She's 66 years old. There we go. Haven't seen there, there's no recent pictures of her. All the pictures of her are from like 1990. Huh. All right. Sorry, that was just me. That was just me ADHDing out. <laughs> all right. All right. We are we are now time to go. Let's get this on. All right. Ah, hydration. Well, I'm bringing this up. See, that's my problem when I go out drinking and stuff. Everybody, you, know, you should always, always, always drink at least twice as much water as uh, alcoholic beverage you're consuming. But I forget to do that all the time. In my head, I'm thinking, well, what I'm drinking is just mostly water. Yeah, it's 50% alcohol, but it's still 50% water. But that's not how it works at all. <laughs> so, I'm, yeah, that's a, that's a problem. All right, this, the first thing we're going to look at is the order, the order to compel. And before we jump into that, we have our first two Super Chats of the day. Let's look at the first two Super Chats. First, Island with a $5. Thank you so much, Island. Hey, look. No, look at you not being kidnapped by a taxi tri- by a cab driver. Hey, uh, yay. Hey, did you say you once let your girlfriend lick your eye? Sorry about that rumor. If, what? Oh God, no! <laughs> oh my Lord, no! I have a, I have, I actually have an eye phobia. <clears throat> oh my God, Island, why are you doing that to me? Island, Island, why are you doing that to me? <laughs> no, I have an eye phobia. I don't like anything anywhere near my eyes. Like, you, I, I don't even like like people like doing this or like you touch. I. I did, I don't like anything anywhere near my eyes. Yeah, so if anybody tells you that I let somebody lick my eye, oh, hell no. No, I I have a huge eye phobia because I've only got two of them. You you can lose a finger and not really be bothered with it because you got nine more to work with. With like arms and legs and eyes, you only got two. (laughs) And especially like with eyes, one of them goes, you're effed. You have no depth perception. You can't, your, your range of vision is shortened. Yeah, no, I, I don't like any, that's why I, I never got LASIK. I have no desire to have any sort of eye surgery to, to uh, you know, change my vision because I don't want razor blades or lasers anywhere near my eyes. And every, every horror and most action movies will have the scene, the scene that I mean, literally every horror movie and most action movies have that scene where either 
like somebody's trying to drive a needle into someone's eye or they're doing some sort of eye surgery or or the bad guy's got the knife and he's like trying to stab the guy like the knife the point of the knife is right towards someone's eye i cannot watch that shit i cannot watch it it freaks me the hell out yeah uh no so any anybody that says that i let anyone do anything anywhere near my eyes is just flat out lying to you. Ugh. Oh no, that that freaks me out. It's like I I was just I was briefly considering LASIK and so I talked to a bunch of friends that had gone through LASIK and uh I stopped when the one friend's like no it's, it's like really good. I can see really well. Well the only the only really weird thing was like when you're awake and you're watching the laser like and like then you can smell your eyeball burning. I'm like, no, f that shit. I'm out. He's like, yeah, you can just smell your eyeball burning. It's really weird. I'm like, yeah, no, uh, uh-uh. <laughs> sorry. All right. Anyway, thank you very much, Island, for that. But no, there could not be anything further from the truth. There could not be anything further from the truth. Uh, Ginger with a soul says, how exciting and unexpected legal vices. You should always expect Friday evening legal vices because that's when I stream on Friday. Uh, Monday through Thursday, it's morning U.S. time. And Friday, it is evening U.S. time. All right, Mag in Florida. Thank you so much for your super chat. Those are words. Few drinks. Frightening. Frightening. <laughs> Those are words. Few drinks. Frightening. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. And Ghost Fox. Ghost Fox has, for some reason, chosen to be a new member of the Clean and Sober crew. Thank you very much. I hope you will not live to regret it. <laughs> Maybe you already do. I don't know. And Island again with $2 Super Chat. My bad. Must have been someone else. It most definitely. It was either somebody else or someone. Someone lying on me. No, nobody lie on, on legal vices. All right, and Tina, we're going to read Tina's Super Chat. Then we're going to jump into the order to compel. Not the order to compel lunch. The order to compel Laura Owens to turn over her medical records and other stuff. Tina Douche Canoe Esquire just posted an 84 page request for judicial notice five minutes ago. What is a request for judicial notice? Um, I haven't read this. And oh, Lord, maybe we need to look at that too. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> a, a, a request for judicial notice is basically saying they want the judge to accept as fact the things that they put in the motion. Like, just take judicial notice of the fact that it is now 10, 19 a.m. and it's sunny and partly cloudy outside. It's like, we don't have to argue, so we don't have to show evidence. We don't have to bring in all of this stuff to prove that it is, in fact, sunny with a partly cloudy skies. So it's, it's just taking the judicial, it's, it's requesting the judge to accept as fact something so that they don't have to argue about it. We'll have to look at that, too, I guess, and see what that's all about. But, yeah, I saw he posted the a screenshot of the first page on his Twitter deal. Like, I'd post the whole thing, but people will spurg out on it. Uh, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> so thank you very much, Tina and Cindy T. Eyes freak me out. Thank you. And, and, and kneecaps. Kneecaps, too. Ah, see, that that's what I'm talking about. You got two arms, two legs, and two eyes. When I sleep, I cannot sleep with like my legs or my arms hanging over the edge of the bed because I have this weird phobia that someone's going to come in in the middle of the night, and, like jump on them and like break my knees and break my elbows or something like that. Uh, so there, there's a fear that uh, some of you probably don't need unlocked. Yeah, like I just I just know that I'm going to be sleeping on my stomach with my legs over the edge of the bed and someone's going to come and jump on my legs, which is going to snap my knees the wrong direction. Uh, right. So anyway, enough of that. Now here is... <clears throat> our motion to compel. Oh, we got the doggos here. Strawberry has just brought in a, a chew toy. So over here, <coughs> it's strawberry. All right, everybody. We are actually well on our way to uh, unleashing doggo cam. So that's pretty cool. Let's go here. Uh, in the Superior Court of Arizona, let me bring up the big screen. Righto. <clears throat> Order. Assigned to Honorable Julie Mata. 
based on respondents motion to compel filed March 11th, 2024 and good cause appearing. It is here by ordered. This is the court order. This is you must do it or face consequences order. You must do this. Uh, it is hereby ordered granting respondents motion to compel. It is hereby ordered compelling, requiring, mandating, forcing petitioner to provide respondent with the following disclosure. And disclosure is disclosing all of your documents to the other side. It is hereby ordered compelling petitioner to provide respondent with the following disclosure. Uh, let's see how we do Can, Let's embiggen this more, should we? Or, well, let's embiggen me first. And do, 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 do. Can we embiggen? Oh, no, we. Oh, that's interesting. This is a fancy schmancy document. There we go. Nope, I'm in the way. So back me off more. Can we do one more? No, we can't do one more click. Hide that. We don't need to share that. There we go. All righty. It is hereby ordered compelling petitioner to provide respondent with the following disclosure. All privileged records, all non-privileged records, sorry, all non-privileged records and communications relating to the 2014 paternity matter. That may be paternity zero. That may be paternity zero, they're asking, because this is going back 10 years. This judge wants 10 years of medical records. So he wants all records and communications related to the 2014 paternity matter involving petitioner and somebody in California and rejected. All medical records for petitioner from Planned Parenthood Mission Viejo from on or about July 7, 2023. So the 2014 possibly, possibly uh, paternity zero and the newest, the Planned Parenthood from Mission Viejo, the name and contact information for the medical abortion pill provider who informed petitioner she was pregnant with male and female twins and any and all communications between the provider regarding the same, including but not limited to any sonogram and related records provided by petitioner. Ooh, this is going to be good. Because she's like, yeah, I talked to this guy, and this is like, what, 11 days or something like that? I can't remember the timeline, so so don't jump my shit, Newt Gingras, uh, you know, the, the, you know the, 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 the Gingras bank holder, whatever, whatever you want to call him. Mr. Gingras, don't jump my shit. I'm going straight from you know, hangover-induced memory you know, here. But it was something like a few weeks, like maybe 11 days, two weeks or something like that. When she came back and said, you know, they, the, the, you know, this person told me I was pregnant with male and female twins. They're like, yeah, the judge. Okay. I want the contact information. I want the name and the number and email of everybody at this, uh, uh, this abortion pill provider who told you that you were pregnant with male and female twins at this very ridiculously early date. And any and all communications regarding the same. And sonograms. Because this is the important thing. And it, obviously women don't need to be told and men shouldn't need to be told. But you don't just pee on a stick and they go, aha, you have male and female fetuses. You got to use sonograms and look for the dangly bits or the not dangly bits. So the judge is like, I want these sonograms as well. The name and contact information of the telehealth doctor petitioner spoke with on the day of the miscarriage. That is that is an interesting thing because the the day of the miscarriage has wandered significantly. Just a second. Uh -huh. A quick second here. All right. I had to stop my dogs from, from licking each other's butt. Uh, if you must know what I was doing just there. <clears throat> 
All right. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was. I was. I was a little bit. A little bit uh, taken aback by that. <laughs> <laughs> the name and information of the telehealth doctor petitioner spoke with on the day of the miscarriage. And what, what I was saying about that is she said, uh, in, I, I, I miscarried probably sometime in November ish. And then the judge said, all right, well, let, we need the, well, then, uh, you know, Clayton's family and the judge also. If you remember one of the hearings, the judge says, okay, exactly what day. I want to know the day that you had this miscarriage because the six month mark triggers that that special time when it goes from a miscarriage to being a stillbirth. And if it happens after the six month mark, you need a death certificate for those fetuses because they're considered stillbirths and not miscarriages. And it was like, oh, I guess I must have had a miscarriage sometime before November, uh, you know, maybe September, October. And it's like, all right, fine, when? But you still, in October, you know, you, you have all these problems. And then it's like, oh, I guess it was it was in July. I had that's the that's the newest stance. I've had I had the miscarriage in July. So July, August, September, into October, she still has this massive baby bump four months after giving uh after having a miscarriage. So now the judge is is doing two things here. Of course, all of this is the request of, of Clayton's lawyer, Dick Woodnick. And uh, Greg's Dick Woodnick, sorry. Greg, Greg Woodnick. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Greg. This is all at their request because now it's the name of the person they spoke with on the day of the miscarriage. That does two things. They're they're require the judge is requiring her to pinpoint the date that she had the miscarriage. There's no more. There's more. No more effing around with this. She's got to come up with a date that she had that miscarriage. And the contact details of the person that she talked to about having the miscarriage on that specific day. So that's a, that's a thing. Uh, so all communications with the provider regarding the same, regarding the miscarriage, including the images of the two stillbirth fetuses with the date clearly shown that the petitioner alleges she provided. That's one of the things that uh, her lawyer is now saying, her new lawyer, uh, Newt, Newt, Newt Gingras. <laughs> We're just calling him Newt Gingras because the guy is clearly, clearly a, a liberal and probably and his last name happens to be Gingras. And he would be probably hates being referred to by someone like such as Newt Gingrich, a, a well-known Republican uh, conservative. So we're just, I'm just calling him Newt Gingras just for shits and giggles. Uh, where, where, where the fook is Megan Fox? Is she missing? Um, no, she's here. She said she would pop in a little bit later. We'll, we'll see if she does. She's got things going on. It's Friday night there. You know, everybody's got families that I invited. Uh, other than me, I've just got two dogs on a Saturday morning. And stop licking each other. Damn it. Come over here. Come over here, Strawberry. Come on. Don't do that. That's that's your brother. You shouldn't be doing that. That's only for consenting adults. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so she said, oh, I, I took pictures of the fetal sacks, I think she called the fetal sacks, and, and, sent them, and sent them to this person. So, yeah, the judge, like, cough them up. Well, no, don't, don't cough up the fetal sacks. That would be that would be really weird. But, you know, release and reveal the photographs with the date clearly shown, as you said. And also the text messages between petitioner and, and somebody that starts with an S the text message between petitioner and S the day of the miscarriage where petitioner sent the images of the fetuses with all pertinent metadata. Was this her sister? I think she, I can't remember who she said she sent them to, but anyway, she wants the text messages that was sent to somebody on the day of the miscarriage where petitioner sent the images of the fetuses with all pertinent metadata. Yep, that's right. Thank you, B Bean. I, I thought I knew it was her sister. It is further ordered. The petitioner must provide the information no later than 5 p.m. 
on April 19th, 2024. That is Friday. That's this coming Friday. She has until this Friday to release this information. And I know 419 is Friday because 419 Friday is also my F it Friday stream where we just say F it and we throw all, all, all caution to the wind. We have a great panel of guests on and we just grift for, for money so I don't have to grift for money the rest of the month. It's a, it's a big thing. It's fun if you haven't seen one. We just get up to all sorts of shenanigans. And I do I do shots. Every $100 that rolls in, I, I do a shot of very, very, very awesome, very, very high-proof alcohol. And as the show goes on, shenanigans happen. So don't miss it next Friday. Empty your wallets and bring all your cash and give it to me. <laughs> it's further ordered. The request for attorney fees and costs will be joined with previous requests to be heard at the trial evidence you're hearing on June 10th. So in this, uh, in this motion to compel the uh, the disclosure of these medical records. They also Clayton's lawyer also asked for costs. So the judge said, "All right, let's just pile all this on the June tenth. June tenth is the big day. That's the that's the day of the game. That's the Super Bowl. That's the the you know, game seven of the World Series. That's the the final F one race of the year. That is the World Cup." That is whatever they call the basketball championship. I think it's called the basketball championship, don't they? Uh, <laughs> that's that game. That's the day we're going. That's the day we're going to trial, June 10th. So the hearing on June 10th, there's all right, we'll just add all of this shit in. We'll add all the all the motions for costs and all that stuff on top of everything else we're going to talk about on June 10th. And then we go through important stuff here. The judge, the document signed, it's ordered. And that is the end of that document forever and ever and ever. Uh, all right, hang on. What has happened to my, my index here? Stop it. There we go. Huh? All right, there we go. The next thing we're going to look at here in just a quick minute is the response or objection to motions to petitioner's motion to compel lunch. That's what we did last week. Uh, and, and that's why I'm doing things different this week. I'm reading the motions. I'm reading this response, and then I'm going to read the, uh, the the complaint, Laura's complaint against her lawyers and Clayton, Clayton's lawyers. I'm going to read the main body. And then we're going to go back and look at the evidence, because last week I went through the entire uh, res- the entire motion to compel lunch. And it turned the the two hour stream turned into a six and a half hour stream, and we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're not going six and a half hours today. One, I just can't. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of horizontal time today, whilst I recover from last night's shenanigans. And speaking of shenanigans, <sighs> go with God, everyone. Here we here we come. I got. We're going off the rails. We're on crazy train with Megan Fox. And that's the last thing you'll read for the rest of the night, Jeff. No kidding. (laughs) But if that's the last thing I read, at least I got through it. (laughs) I can say that. You did. You did. Which is why, as as I just said, we're we're gonna read the main body of the response to the motion to compel lunch and the I hate my lawyer. Oh, yeah, and I hate your lawyer too. Then we'll go back and in the remaining time, if any, which is now highly doubtful, uh, we'll look through the we'll look through the exhibit. Just a question: I would like to file a motion to compel you to stay on the rails. That's what I think I'm going to do. File a motion to compel Jeff to stay on those rails. And and speaking of Megan Fox and com- and compulsions. Your your job, everyone here, is to compel and coerce and convince her that she needs to have massive amounts of bourbon beginning right now. No, the bourbon is ready, but it's back here. I'm drinking water, Jeff, because I'm I am too. Post I am post supposed facto. to be going. I am supposed to be going on Ricada Law at midnight, and then the bourbon shall commence. But if I start before, I will fall asleep before midnight. And I swear to God. If that ass stands me up one more time, I promise you, I will forgive him and reschedule. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Just letting you know, Rakeda, I'm laying down the law. 
stand me up one more time mm. and I will absolutely yeah, reschedule. You, you are allegedly <laughs> going to be going on Nick Ricada stream to allegedly Alleged talk about allegedly, this case. Allegedly. Right. <laughs> we'll, allegedly. we'll see if that happens. In the meantime, just drink to get relaxed. You know, that's what I'm saying. I'm not doing that. I swear <laughs> to God. If I do that, and I really want a glass of bourbon right now. I totally do. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm not going to lie. I do. But if I start now, I will not make it to the Ricada stream. I will be passed out in this chair, 12 o'clock a roll around, and then I will have stood him up, which he probably deserves. deserves but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, you heard it here, Alyssa Clips. He deserves it. His friends are turning on him. His friends are all turning on him. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <clears throat> Did any of you see MG Law from last night? No, I haven't seen if MG I saw Law some of shows it. Up. I saw some of it. They were cracking themselves up for sure. They were. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, see, that's like the rudest thing that like a funny person can say to someone else. Well, they were they were cracking <laughs> themselves up. <laughs> but I had to say that because the expert was on, and I can't oh, say anything yeah. nice about him on on you know online. <laughs> that's apparently the deal we've made. And th this from the I don't start drama person. I can't say anything teasing. nice about this person. I'm, I'm just teasing. No, they were having a great time last night. And it was funny. I didn't get to watch all of it. I watched maybe the first like hour and a half. And even in there, you know, you think you don't get to your topic in time. Yeah. I watched for an hour and they still hadn't opened a document. So, you know, this is no, why I they can, need me. I can get to my topic. Just certain guests... <laughs> you, we tend not to not to be so fortunate with, and I just want to say one thing. One thing, real quick here, from uh, from Mo, one of one of our our Alan mods uh, from Alan Walsh. Um, he said he has his young cousin who's been in the hospital for the past hundred days and needs two kidneys. Uh, the family have set up a GoFundMe for him. You feel free to drop the link, and I, I just out of policy, I do not advocate or, re, or 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 suggest or recommend that people go and give to GoFundMe's. I would say do your research and uh, you you make the determination whether you want to or not. But Alan Walsh, please go ahead. Feel free to put up the link to the GoFundMe, and anybody, if you feel compelled to do so, go look at go check it out, and you decide for yourself whether you want to donate or not. Uh, it's entirely up to you, but please feel free to put up the link to that there. Um, and if anybody has an MG law sighting, let him know. He, he can join here. Uh, we, we, you know, this is, this is an open forum. I would love to see him. And speaking of open forums, let's talk about Laura Owens. I would love to talk about Laura Owens. <clears throat> but first we got a couple super chats. Uh, Jeff, can you check your ex? No, I just did that. DM from Helen Wapley's. I, I did that, and that's what we just talked about. So feel free. Thank you very much for that. You didn't have super chat to do that. I have eyes. And Tammy. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Tammy Fayette. Tammy Fayette likes it when I give her an ASMR name. Tammy Fayette. Hello. Just when you thought this case couldn't get crazier. Thank you very much. And also Tammy Fayette. Ta also Tammy Fayette. Megan is awesome. Get hair and six hours. Oh, great hair and six hours to go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Tammy. I deeply appreciate it. Cindy T with a That $5. was a nice comment. Thank you. I did it hear was. that. And it took six hours to do that hair or something like that. Cindy T finally catching alive when not working for Potato Doggos. And thank you, Legal and Megan. Well, you are very, very welcome. Uh, you absolutely, absolutely welcome. And where are we at here? We got Sarah Adams. Megan has the amazing ability. Justifying all things. <laughs> Do I? Good. She does. Cool. Is we that call the forgiving, that. Forgive him and reschedule comment, probably. <laughs> Look, I give my friends a very wide berth. I really do. I think you should forgive your friends yeah. for whatever. We call that enabling and making excuses where I come from, but whatever. <laughs> Sarah Adams is a nicer person than me. Uh, and Daniel Patrick for the five dollars, FYI, Mike from Red Bar is streaming right now. We don't care. What? <laughs> Who's Mike? Wait, what? exposing you, but exposing you though. This is about you for yeah. being into feet and other sick stuff. What? Who is that? I don't even know who I, that is. I don't know who Mike from Red Bar is. 
I think you have the wrong guy. Jeff is not in defeat. Yeah, that would be that would be he's, far from the from the truth. I think um, Jeff's and he's definitely not into eyeballs from what I heard earlier. By the way, my dog one time licked my eyeball on accident, you know, because he comes in for the face attack and my eye, you know, I didn't turn my head fast enough yeah. and he licked my eyeball. I must have spent a month worried that I was going to get some kind of horrific infection and lose my eye. It was a very weird feeling. Also, I don't recommend. Uh -huh. Hope it's not true. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea who Mike from Red Bar is. Is Red Bar a channel or something like that? And uh, I guess Mike is the guy that, that was runs probably the just place. A pay, it was probably just a paid advertisement. Yeah. We should just move on. Yeah, well, there there is a channel called uh, Red Red Bar Red Bar Rewind, but there oh, there's no. no live videos there. There's no live videos there, so I don't know. Whatever. Oh, sorry, uh, Nathan C. My dad just had a quadruple bypass three hours ago. Oh God. For those that pray, please keep him in, keep please yeah. keep him in your prayers. I'm on a flight to Phoenix to see him. Oh wow! Uh, I I hope I wish for the best. Me too. That's scary. But also, uh, my dad's had similar surgeries, and you'd be amazed at how well the recovery actually can be. I mean, medical science with heart surgeries is kind of amazing. So, all the best to your dad, and I'm sure he's going to recover. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Seriously. All, all, all the best. And oh wait, we already did that one. <laughs> I have, I have no idea what that means. So whatever. And Sarah Adams with the two dollars. Thank you so much. Damn, Megan, Lisa, love sexy. Aw, well that's awfully sweet, Sarah. My hashtag my homos. The lesbians love me, Jeff. They cannot get enough. They cannot get enough, I'm telling you. My lesbian fans are, are good to me. Uh, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> Rob got the same super chat. All right, what, what else? Anyway, th thank you. Hey, if you want to troll me and throw money at me, go right freaking ahead. <laughs> I consider that a win for me. Uh, all right. <clears throat> As you can see, Megan's been here for however long, and we've done not a word of this thing since she got here. Uh, but it has given me some time to rehydrate a little bit. And I'm drinking water uh, like a fiend. Well, me too, but you're doing it right. You're front-loading the water. I'm I'm like, oh, dear God, I need to, hide, I need to hydrate. Well, because I also drank bourbon last night. I was like three in before I went to bed. But if I just drink straight bourbon, I'm fine when I wake up. But, you know, two nights in a row might be a little rough. So I got to front load the water. Yeah. Uh, Alan says, you know, appreciate it, brother. Unfortunately, it's as real as it can be. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm just saying I don't actively tell people to go and donate to GoFundMes just as a matter of principle. But people are definitely, definitely welcome to go there and check it out and decide for themselves what to do. Uh, you know, best wishes. Best wishes to, you know, for the, for the kidneys. That's, ugh. Uh, Megan is a MILF, says Flux. <laughs> Hashtag number one homo. There she is. There she is. You need to take a vacation to Vegas at the end of next month. Just saying. What's going on in Vegas? Uh, Flux and I are going to be in Vegas. Uh, uh, Jess uh, from, from Moxie Dame is gonna going to be there. To, I can't because I'm going to Scottsdale. I'm going there right after you guys are going to be in Vegas. Yeah, I know. I used to like go there like a couple of weeks early and I hang out in the, the, in the great desert Southwest for a couple of I weeks. I can't. My husband will kill me. I've already bring got him my, along. I've already got my things, my schedule set. Miss inflexible. <laughs> All when, right, you well. three, when you have three kids, you're pretty inflexible. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, JKD Buck. Uh, OJ won't be in Vegas. <laughs> OJ won't be anywhere anymore. No, see, this is, we, we, we covered the OJ trial every Thursday for a year and a half. And Ari was going to set us up with an interview with OJ while I was there next oh, month. Well, yeah, I guess that ain't <laughs> happening. So uh, I, I've decided that we're just going to go to like the shadiest medium possible and talk to OJ while I'm in Vegas anyway. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm going to pay some woman to knowingly scam me. It's awesome. That's a great idea. I don't, I'm not going to go to a real idea. medium. Not going to go to a real medium because, you know, I don't do that stuff. I just want like the most like obviously fake medium there possibly is. Uh, but all right, let's get on with this, this response to motions to petitioners motion to compel lunch. Oh, and, and for those of you that care, we are, 
we're almost we're we're we're, we're fifty eight fifty seven dollars away from emotional support potato pig dog cam. Uh, all right. <laughs> This was this is the response to the six and a half hour stream I did last last weekend at this time, and we're not doing that. We are literally only going for another hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, I'm going to do a hard out because I need to be horizontal for an hour or two. Totally acceptable. <clears throat> because I survived the weird taxi ride with my kidneys intact, so that's great. I, I consider that a win. <laughs> I loved that picture, by the way. You were like, what do I do? I'm like, go with it, Jeff. Just go with it. Yeah. Just well, thankfully, it, it's only like a, a three-mile ride to my homes. It was it was short-lived. I didn't have any seizures, so that was good. Respondent Clayton Eckerd, by and through counsel, undersigned, hereby objects, and responds to petitioner's motion to compel lunch. <laughs> it is just the stupidest fucking title for a document I've ever, ever heard. Uh, 45 minutes in and I dropped an F-bomb. Uh, and the alternative relief filed April 8th, 2024. And oh, as and for his response, respondent states the following. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe this was meant to be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the greatest opening ever? <laughs> that is. Uh, that I is. That, that. I mean, it's because if it's a joke, it's like, all right, it was it wasn't funny. And if it wasn't a joke, it's like, well, you're just effing stupid. <laughs> so either way, either way, you don't get out of it unscathed. Woodnick is is such a wordsmith. I love I love the way he writes. Where where the other side tends to be a little snarky and petty and whiny and nah, 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 nah. he's just like, May, maybe you think you're funny, but <laughs> maybe you think you're a clever dick. But in the context of the other communications from petitioner, bar complaints, more threats of bar complaints, threats of lawsuits, hinting at lawsuits against journalists and allegations of ARP, it is inappropriate. Yes. So you, you think you're funny, but you're not. Take it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, especially allegations of ARP. Like, yeah. You're being really cute with your filings and everything, but you're also accusing my client of some really heinous things and threatening bar complaints against his office, against him and his associates. And yet the guy has the nerve to go to the judge and be like, he won't go to lunch with me. And then you're going to find <laughs> out through the exhibits in this how much douche canoe lied he he <laughs> lied i don't have my button anymore uh, you, you didn't get it fixed huh well my stream deck is fixed but it went back to the old settings and so i, I lost a couple of new buttons and she lied was one of them so unfortunately she lied yeah it, this this reminds me a lot of like the most desperate time in my life when i was four years old <laughs> Uh, almost ready to turn five and we moved from the first house I lived in to a new house in a new neighborhood. And I, I literally like remember looking at all of the kids in the neighborhood. Then I would like go knock on the door. And go, I just moved in. Will you be my friend? <laughs> <laughs> I remember Can I compel that. you yes. to go out and play ball with me? Motion to compel to be my friend. <laughs> Uh, well, Tina, Tina with a dollar ninety nine super jazz says motion to compel brunch, and I'm in. <laughs> me too. Yeah, you don't have to compel me to brunch. Uh, brunch sounds so good, but not yet. I'm not ready to to consume solids. <laughs> It'll happen a bit later. It's like maybe this was meant to be a joke, but it's inappropriate. And I like how he, like he actually puts in parentheses parenthetically. <laughs> Parenthetically, in parentheses, the lawsuits against uh, uh, the the case law cited by petitioner is factually distinct from this matter, where petitioner continues to evade compliance and basic disclosure. To be clear, the respondent does not object to the notion of lunch with petitioner's counsel. However, as repeatedly expressed to petitioner, see below, respondent will not engage in lunch without the compelled disclosure. Like, yeah, you sh you give me all of the uh, the the fetal sack pictures, all of the contact details yeah. for the person who told you what eleven days in or however many early weeks it was in that you're having male and female twins. Give me all of that, and then then we can have uh. we can have a, a nice lunch of like spaghetti and meatballs and look at the fetal sack pictures together <laughs> and compare. Jeff, yeah. 
Can you stop <laughs> saying fetal sex? No. <laughs> It, that 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 should be said in in connection with like spaghetti and meatballs or a nice lasagna or something like that, uh, oh, and you can compare and contrast. Oh, oh. you can like is it spaghetti and meatballs or is it fetal sex? You know? Oh, <laughs> Jeff, for fuck's sake! You it's love horrible. me, you love me, Megan. You know you do. I do, but that's pretty horrible. <laughs> <laughs> pretty terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> or just a, never. I was gonna say, or just like a a, a, a clumpy menstruation thing. But I don't. Wanna, I don't want. Even I don't want to go there. <sighs> Respondent will not engage in lunch without the compelled disclosure, and in light of the nature of petitioner's communications, without a neutral third party present. Does, does the waitress count as a neutral third party? <laughs> no, here, just no, sit down. no. He needs <laughs> a full time neutral third party who will sit there and witness what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> as as detailed in an email to petitioner's counsel on April Fool's Day, April 1st, as for lunch, I enjoy food. <laughs> I all I too enjoy food. So the, too so much, the, some might say. Yep. The, 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 I, I too I, cannot put down my fork as Nick Ricada has reminded me repeatedly. Ghost Fox says, worst of all, I'm eating here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bio, oh, bio sack. Ugh. Okay. Even I object to the term bio sack. <laughs> oh. So this is an actually, this is an excerpt from an email that was sent from, from council to council. And before we get there, thank God Aztec has given us another break from fetal sacks. Motion to compel lunch. Seems eerily similar to motion to compel dating. Yeah, yeah bingo, it? bingo, right on the nose. Oh, you got it right there. There it is. So did yeah. so did Laura. She Owens. found a lawyer who's exactly like her. It's insanity. Laura Owens got it right on the nose too. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just not in the eye. Um, all right. Motion to give, thank you very much, Aztec, for the, the $20 oh. super chat. That was very, very generous of you. Thank you Damn. very much. As they say in Korea, thank you, Betty Monk Chief. Uh, <laughs> that's not racist because that's what they actually say. Uh, <laughs> as for lunch, I enjoy food. Mm, food. Mm, in my 24 food. years of practice, I have never said no to a lunch or beer invitation, but I'm saying not now. Don't you love when your date says that? I'm not saying no. I'm just saying not right now. Not now. <laughs> not now. Just, just, Greg knows what's up. He knows he's playing hard to get. He's Gre like, Gre Gre you know. Greg's like friend zoning. Can't have yet. all of this immediately. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You got to work for it, brother. <laughs> Parenthetically, you're one of my best friends. Friends! <laughs> we're not going to, we're not going to the dance party. Friend! <laughs> Let's be friends. Yeah, I'm not going. You're just like a brother to me. <laughs> you say you're not coming to my house, but we can be brothers. <laughs> All right. Funny. Perhaps uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying not now, not now. <laughs> Maybe later when hell freezes over, but not now. Perhaps this will be nothing more than fodder for a future future blog post. <laughs> But I trust you're being sincere. Oh, God. Your statements and emails over the phone, on your blog, on your Twitter, etc. may have been the product of passion. The product of passion. But they were I don't received. like the way that sounds. <laughs> I don't like the way that sounds at all. The, the tonsil twins were the product of A passion. A product of passion? Well. Yeah, like the tonsil twins. Exactly. Grant Rasha, legal advice is going cray-cray for the puberty blockers. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm sending you a live. I'm sending you a live photo of uh, my homos, by the way, because this is literally what they're doing right now. This is cracking oh me up. It's on Twitter. All right. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's on Twitter. I, you're making me. You're making me work for my money here. In your Twitter DMs. Yeah, I know. I got to open Twitter. Megan's uh, homos. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> we're very see. inclusive. We're very inclusive here. 
Um, oh, God damn it. That's on a different browser. Hang on. You got to copy and paste the link. Who did copy. this, by the way? Copy. Who did this? Paste. Was it Flux? Oh, it was Chris. Chris did it. Chris, are you in the chat? I hope you're here for this because he'll get a kick out of this. Chris has been trying to make a <laughs> pond scum uh, Megan Tomo's photo from AI. And I think he finally hit it. Although, yeah, this is. <laughs> This is this pretty is good. good. It's like the Ponscarm uh, Ponscum Army. <laughs> Just for Clayton. I love the rainbow flag. Yeah. Hashtag my homos. <laughs> there they are. That's kind there of there they are. I like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh! Did you see that? The, the, just, just to take an ADHD side side trip here for just a second. Did you see that picture that the Navy released in their oh, official, no, like stop. press release? Was it more dudes in high heels? Oh no, 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 no! This, this was weirdly worse. Uh, it, How does it get worse than that? Because this actually shows operational readiness. This. This was a, a this was a it's commander. Gonna embarrass me and put us. No 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 no. I I I don't have here's I can't bring it up. I, it'll just it'll very briefly describe it. Okay. This was in an official uh, Navy press release about their operational readiness to be able to to deploy anywhere, anytime, and to fight for truth, justice, in the American way. It was it was a photograph of the the captain of the uh, John McCain, which is a which is like a guided missile destroyer. Oh God, he's got the scope backwards. Yes. Well, no, he's got the scope backwards. The lens cap is still on it and his hand grip is right up against the magazine instead of further out where it should be. He's like, oh, he's like holding no. it like this and he's got these little chicken wing arms. I see it. Yeah, his arm is all chicken winged out and he's, the, the, <laughs> the hand grip is like right up against the magazine. The scope is on backwards with the lens cap still on it. Oh, no. They, they promptly took it down after they were soundly ridiculed on the Internet. <laughs> so, so bad. And the, 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 the original comments to that were just hilarious. Like, oh, God, we're in trouble. <laughs> We're gonna lose the next war. <laughs> but Somebody yeah, said, "Man, the scope is annoying, but that grip placement is downright wild." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wait, I, I I can find it real quick. No, nobody cares, but I can find it real quick because I, I I emailed it to Flux. All right, let's see. Oh, it's pretty funny. Let's see. Uh. Uh, all right. Let me see if I can do this oh, here. Oh, without... no way. The United States Space Force tweeted out, Dear U.S. Navy, even our space grunts know the proper direction to mount a scope. <laughs> yeah, so so you, you can see the, the scope. Th this is where your eye goes right here, in case you don't know. And it's still got the lens cap on it. <laughs> oh, no. And this part here where his hand is should be right about here. <laughs> Oh no! Well, did they put it in the wrong spot? I don't understand. They put the yeah. Grip you can, the, the, this is adjustable. Someone put here. this gun together wrong. No, this is this this is adjustable. I think there someone was just fucking with me. I I don't know. <laughs> They're like yeah. here, pose with this. It was probably someone from the army. <laughs> and, and and this elbow that's like out here like this should be tucked. <laughs> His elbow should be like right about here. Oh no! This is just this is just a bad picture. <laughs> exactly. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have noticed anything about it because I don't shoot guns. I don't know anything about guns. I, I no clue. Like to me, I'm like, eh, whatever. But it is funny when people who do know these things point that <laughs> this shit out. The armor hated the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> look yeah. at look at this, Jeff. Hold on. Let me. Uh, all right. <laughs> People are like, what the hell? I didn't the sign replies, up for this. <laughs> the replies are so good. Look at this. This one says Navy's newly issued oh, sidearm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw that. <laughs> now, even I know that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, only used once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the replies are so good. Yeah, although that was that was funny. I, I I don't even know how we got there, but we did. All right, let's get back to the the the, the meat and taters of our compelled lunch. 
I just want to point out, I am not the one that went down that rabbit hole. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get some more water. Wow, I was very breathy there. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me on my YouTube that your wheezing is an indication that you have asthma. Do you have asthma? No. See, I knew that you were going to say no. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be able to tell these YouTube that's, doctors to take a hike. That's, that's what anyone with asthma would say. No, they deny it. They're <laughs> asthma deniers. No, You're so an it, asthma denier. No, it... it I didn't used to be, I didn't used to have a wheezy laugh. That comes from the, the years on the radio when something was funny and I would like have to hide my laughter. And you can't, yeah, you can't you know? like bust out with it. Yeah, right? you just have to. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. Speaking of busting out, uh, lunch. I like lunch. I want lunch. Not now. Uh, you, you're having a temper tantrum. Given your verbiage. <laughs> I, I, I like that verbiage and your approach online and to my team. I think Judge Mata will side with me on any trepidation issues here. That said, I'm quick to forgive. Underline. Like me. Like yeah. me with Nick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen exactly how. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm quick to forgive. And if your email is meant to be an olive branch apology for the professional allegations and overzealous advocacy, I would certainly accept that apology. You're, you're, you're very, I actually called him Dick Woodnick at the beginning. <laughs> Greg Woodnick is a very good man. As further well, provided. Look at how nice and like kind he's being, you know, like he's like, okay, you did all this, like, you know, attacking and threatening and all of this stuff, but you know, willing to forgive it, willing to overlook it. See, that's me, Sarah Adams. I, I get body shakes, loss of air and snorting when I laugh. Exactly. That's, that's exactly me. <laughs> This, this, when the snorts come out, you know it's funny. Uh, Island with the $2. So Jeff has some unhealed friend zone trauma. <laughs> Don't we all, though? You're my best friend. You're just like a brother to me. Just drive that stake a little deeper into the heart. Buddha Berries, what's up? All the way from Aussie land. I was listening before, but couldn't chat. I was listening to a med story po podcast about a lady on a fishing boat who got eye worms. I was traumatized, so I need someone else to be <laughs> I need someone else to be. <laughs> I were I can't yeah. even. I'm I'm gonna take that right out of my mind and put it somewhere else. Yeah. like I never heard it. Shudder. Jermaine down with a five dollar. The yellow thread on the brim of his ball cap says he's at least the rank of yes, he is a commander. He, he is the he is the captain of the uh, John the SS John McCain, which is an anti uh, cruise missile destroyer. Some gunner's mate had a go at the CO, I think. Yeah, and it went out and part of the Navy's official press release <laughs> did not go well. As further provided to petitioners council on four four two four. While I appreciate your right to speak on all issues, I'm deeply uncomfortable with the tone you were using in emails to my office. Yeah, so so Dushkinu is is emailing Woodnick's office and giving shit to office people, which is just absolutely uncalled for. If it's happening, allegedly, don't want to get him, you know, don't want to get him riled up. But I'm just I'm just pawn scum. And By Jason. the way, I'm I was told that he tweeted something today, and I can't tell because I'm I'm banned from his Twitter. Um, but I was told he tweeted something today about suing Dave Neal and other journalists for like $150 million. Oh, fuck right off. $150 million. He really think like, sir, I am worth the price of a 100,000 mile mom minivan. You may have that, but that's, that's all <laughs> there is. That's all there is. And like, perhaps like a. I don't know. My YouTube is worth what? $3,000 maybe. I mean, I don't know what this guy thinks he's going to get out of us, but we are not Alex Jones. We do not have networks, but whatever. Hmm. Oh my God. The pond scum posse AI stuff is out of control. He has just dropped a reply in support of the motion to compel lunch. In what? His response to what we're reading now. 
There's a response to the response. Oh, there no. is. Oh, God. Right. No. Wait, 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 wait. He also posted some kind of judicial notice, too, right? Yeah. A 84 page request for judicial notice for something. Oh, holy God. Help me. I can't even keep up with this guy, like how much he writes. Does he have no other cases to work on? Well, I can't wait till they get their first bill. <laughs> They're going to, maybe we should dial this back a little bit, pal. How many pages? It's a nine-page yep. reply in support of motion to compel lunch and for alternative relief. Oh, for fuck's sake. All right. So let's get through this so we can get to that. Breaking news right here on, on the honorary Pond Scum Posse member. <laughs> I am sure that Judge Mott is just going to love this. I'm sure she just Man. loves <sighs> wasting her weekend reading all of this shit. I am the Conor McGregor of litigation. <laughs> <laughs> and I look forward to reading their obituaries. Really invoke something extremely unpleasant. Yeah. Like their deaths. Like the, de the, the, the death. Our death. Jeff, no, the not breadstick. their deaths. Our well, deaths. Me. By there, I meant Dave Tug. I just know? meant you and Tug when I said there. Like, I, I was going to say the the uh, the breadstick posse. I'm, I'm just the pond scum posse. You're the breadstick posse. <laughs> <laughs> the breadstick gang. Whenever there's trouble, they're here on the double. They're the breadstick gang. Uh, I look forward to reading their obituaries. Really evoke something extremely unpleasant. Using the term special ed in a That's what we harped on for a good long time last week at this time. Using the, using the term special ed in a derogatory way is also not something I'm comfortable with either as a lawyer and parent. I have never tweeted in my life. <laughs> there are certainly... Him. I know. I the, I the only reason I did it was because of my stupid YouTube channel that all you people are watching. Thank you very much for watching. I always You're admire, not stupid. My channel is. I admire people <laughs> who don't, uh, you know, tweet. I just can't stop myself. Yeah, I don't understand it, but I admire it because now that I've gotten into the tweety thing. All right. What yeah. have I just done? There we go. I know. I love Twitter. Twitter's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> <sighs> I've never tweeted in my life. There are certainly passionate followers of this case from Bachelor, Na Bachelor Nation due to your client bringing the matter to the world's attention. <laughs> I parent that. did. That said, I was forwarded some of the postings over the past few days, as well as your recent blog post, and I'm just not sure why you're engaging with them. We don't. We're better than you. I'm also not certain why you're publishing court documents and your client's personal medical record contrary to court order. Again, you, you, he, he went on this whole big, it's my client. She doesn't want anything private. I'm putting all her medical records. She, it doesn't matter. The judge said, I don't want to see anybody, either side's medical records released anywhere to anybody for any reason. So he's going against, a, in my opinion, going against a judge's order. That's what Do it sounded like to me, anybody. and it seems yeah. like it sounded like that to Greg Woodnick, too. So yep. that's clearly an argument to be made there. There is. Lunch does not fix the fact that the petitioner has failed to provide disclosure, notwithstanding the, notwithstanding the granted motion to compel, which she has until Friday to turn over these very, very important documents. These antics have delayed the work of both medical and forensic expert reports, and the experts are waiting for the alleged twin fetus pictures. Oh, <laughs> Records between petitioner no and sister. For that. Not me. Yeah, I am. I'm going to take it right to my nearest Italian restaurant and find the nearest food. Oh, it. stop it. Ravioli. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ravioli is kind of like pasta imagine. sacks. Uh, records between petitioner and sister on the date of the alleged miscarriage. See, that's what I liked about that motion to compel. It forces her to set an actual date that this happened. Not November, not maybe September, October, not July. I don't know. To set a date. I don't know when. The judge goes, when did this happen? Uh, the best of my client's ability is sometime a month, maybe two months before November. Oh, you, what day? Uh, she can't yeah. tell you that. Mm -hmm. Now she sure. has to. Yeah. Sure. And the alleged records of the telehealth doctor that allegedly treated petitioner for alleged miscarriage. <laughs> there's so there's so much alleged there. There's lots of alleged. <laughs> the alleged miscarriage, the alleged records, <laughs> and her alleged miscarriage. The, that that alleged is alleged twin fetuses. <laughs> 
that is some good writing right there. Allegedly. Allegedly. The alleged miscarriage of the alleged records that the telehealth doctor allegedly treated prior to her alleged miscarriage. That's nice. Uh, these records were specifically confirmed to be in the in the possession of petitioner's counsel when he stated, Greg, Greg, that is not going to be a problem. You're going to love the image dates because the images are dated July 23, 23. <laughs> July? He asked incredulously. So see, this is the thing. He said he Third. will walk away the minute he is lied to. The first time he knows he's been lied to, he's got to walk away. He's already gone from September, October, all of these, this, uh, all of these test results showing that she was in the middle of a miscarriage in what, when October or whatever the hell this yeah, was. Yeah, October is what he... So now this is the third, like, kind of timeline yeah. that we've well, got see, her. But he can, he can uh, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a Newt Gingras. Um, he can say, well, when she said she had the miscarriage in November, she didn't say that to me. So she's not lying to me. He, he, he could say that, but That's you argued thing. that it, that this, she was in the middle of miscarrying when she, when these numbers were there or had just recently miscarried. Now we're putting this thing three months ahead of that. And his whole big deal was, it doesn't matter whether she was pregnant or not. It's just whether she believes it. Okay. If she's like, here are your pictures. Here are pictures of my miscarriage. Here are pictures of my of my ravioli and marinara sauce. Here are pictures of it <laughs> on July 23rd. But then she stands up in a court of law in October and says, I'm 1,000% pregnant. Want to see my belly? Get in my belly. You know, that's... Uh, that's a problem. Yeah, it's a big you, problem. You you can't say she thought she was pregnant in October or November when she sent a picture of her of her ravioli and marinara sauce miscarriage on July 23rd. You want to hear something else? She filed the paternity action on August 1st. Bitch, Think please. about that. <laughs> so this entire thing was perpetrated on a fraud. If she was pregnant yep. and she miscarried in July, then she did perpetrate a fraud by filing a false paternity action on August 1st. In order for that not to have been false, she would have had to have believed she was still pregnant in August. And we are now being told that it's July. Now, I've put in the private chat in case you want to pull it up. I, you don't have to, but there's a... A couple of clips of her in November. The first one is her saying she's a hundred percent pregnant with with uh, twins in November on the second, and the second clip is her saying, "I just saw my OBGYN." And yeah, All she right, never. Nice. And Higley, this Doctor Higley, she claims has no record of her as a as a client. Justice for Higley Wiggly. Right. Unmute. Dr. Higley. All right, go all the way back. And oh, it's yeah, sorry, that it's was already done. That's what that's what she that's what that's what Clayton said. My main OBGYN is a perinatologist, Dr. McCool. And when is the last time? Oh, well, you said your main OBGYN. Who else are you seeing? What other pregnancy related doctors are you seeing? Dr. Higley, who I saw last Friday. And and the date, this is the October this, sorry, 20 This is something. November. No, oh, this November, is November okay. 2nd. So the last Friday oh, that okay. she's talking yeah. about would be October 27th. Okay. So the day she claimed she saw Higley was October 27th. Now, if you go to the other clip I sent you, it's her saying I'm 100% pregnant. I yeah. think I think I sent you the right one. I'm 100% so. pregnant. On November 2nd. The, like, did this guy watch any of the court coverage of this case? Do you have any prior testimony that you'd like to correct at this time? I do not. Her lawyer said, nope. I want to make sure that you're clear headed. And obviously, uh, it's your position that you are pregnant with alleged twins, correct? 
A hundred percent. Yes, correct. You have any prior testing? Hundred percent correct. So yeah, I know um, for a second. And now we're being told by Douche Canoe that she miscarried in July and somehow this is still in good faith. Yeah, if if that is, if that there actually is something from January, from July 23rd, that's a big, big problem. That's a problem. That's a, a holy shit, that's the evidence. That's the evidence that you manufactured this entire thing. You brought a fraud upon the court. You knew damn well you weren't pregnant on August 1st when you filed a paternity case against Clayton Eckert. So it really doesn't matter whether she miscarried or she was pregnant in July. That doesn't matter. What matters is that she filed a fraud upon the court, period. It's literally a problem. She was chat. She was rubbing her belly in the other, uh, the other. Yeah, one. In the, that was the October hearing where she was October rubbing her belly. Hearing. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. How does the belly grow? How does the belly keep growing? Then you miscarried in July, but by October you had a belly. Because she didn't evacuate, and it was like a, a, a pus-filled sack of some sort. I guess. No, she would have been dead. She would have I had know. sepsis. This whole thing is just absurd. And, and, it makes and I'm sorry to any crazy. any woman that's ever gone through anything as a horrifically and uh, horrific and traumatic as a miscarriage. But I, you know, I was talking to to actually a lady that had a miscarriage last night because I was just I was just curious. So one of my friends I knew had a miscarriage. I'm like, look, is is it possible to have a miscarriage in July and still think you're pregnant in October? And she's like fuck no you'd be you'd either be completely recovered or dead those are your two options <laughs> it's, it's, uh, ick. it's crazy all right speaking of ick let's we need to we need to jump back into this here what have i done I, i've done something i need to stop all right, doing i'll things. be back i'm gonna go get a snack i need a snacky snack and some that, that's mom speak for bourbon <laughs> Uh, what have I done here? Okay, we it looks like we are ten dollars away from Doggo Cam. Hey, that's that's pretty cool. I didn't know we'd we'd gotten there already. Uh, yep, yeah, ten dollars from un away from unlocking the first achievement of the day. The uh, what what are we calling it? The emotional support potato pig dog cam. <laughs> uh, Sarah Adams says I can't. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till she comes back to read that one, and and that one too because that's funny. <laughs> oh, see. I do. I didn't realize I did, but I do. All right. Quick, while Megan's gone, let's read stuff. Share screen. Share screen. Um, let's see. Okay. July, he asks incredulously. Petitioner testified in two related protective order proceedings at her deposition in March. Scroll down, scroll. Oh, there, oh there's footnotes. And made statements to this court that grossly differ on the timeline for the alleged miscarriage, also known as perjury. Yes, statements that grossly differ on the timeline, also known as perjury. What do you got here? Uh, detailed petitioner, gi given us, okay, given us the picture and timestamp for our forensic technology expert, Brian Newmeister. Brian Newmeister, for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure most of you do by this point, Brian Newmeister was the guy that analyzed the photographs and all the metadata for Johnny Depp in the during the Johnny Depp trial with Amber Heard. Dude knows his shiz. So, yeah, uh, great. Brian Newmeister, he's probably really expensive, and he's on this case, and he knows what he's doing. So it's like, we, we want this hot shit guy to look at your photographs with all the metadata uh, for expert Brian Newmeister. When there is already admission of records, records, fraud and a trial in two months is also not something that requires delay. And as we said before, we will address the photo if it is complemented by the alleged verifiable metadata and medical record uh, blank claimed She deleted the picture from her iPhone claimed Sarah deleted it too but also claimed she sent it to the telemed provider. There should be a very clear digital footprint for Newmeister and a picture of a picture, of a picture is not going to cut it in light of the history of her to and her testimony. Very, very important point there. A picture of a picture ain't going to cut it. We need the original with all of the metadata. The metadata don't lie. 
We're also awaiting the original sonogram. She claims she got anonymously. You don't, you don't get anonymous sonograms. You don't get anonymous medical treatment because that opens up a whole load of all kinds of potential malpractice claims, uh, which is, which has affirmed it does not offer anonymous appointments and that it has an easily accessible patient portal. Mm -hmm, exactly. This was the sonogram she admitted she doctored. And that is the core of our motion for relief under the OOP cause number. Uh, two, when you speak with redacted and redacted, they will continue the fabricated documents and fake pregnancy allegations while happening back, were happening back in 20, 2014. That's why the motion to compel insists and orders her to release the records from 2014. And since you saw she blamed Greg Gillespie for other ultrasounds that came from her emails, address, and phone number, and, and emails and texts will be verified by Newmeister, she should be reminded that she did not even know Greg existed back in 2014 when she first claimed to be fake pregnant by Redacted, and the records were faked. Mm-hmm. Perhaps, in addition to trying to conjole a trial continuance, the missing disclosure has not been provided because it contains more fabricated records. Instead of acknowledging that she lied to this court, petitioner has ostensibly dialed up her Photoshop skills. <laughs> she insisted on deposing Eckerd in February, video recorded, and allowed her series of since withdrawn attorneys, her series of attorneys, I like that, <laughs> Her series of already withdrawn attorneys, Bonnie Platter, Alexis Linval, and Corey Keith, to unwittingly use a sonographic exhibit that she has since admitted to doctoring. This is the same fake sonogram she flaunted, claiming she was pregnant with Eckerd's twins after showing up to court before judges, duty, and Galketsis. Galketsis, system with an ostensibly fake pregnant stomach claiming she was 100% pregnant and due with twins on February 14th. Holy crap. That, that is a napalm paragraph length sentence that was loaded for bear. Holy crap. I love that. That was a sentence to be reckoned with. Holy God. Wow. I want to read that again. That's a lengthy sentence, but it is powerful AF. Good Lord. L listen to the, the, listen to the, just the vitriol, just listen to the poison that is, that is just subtly and not so subtly seeping out of this. This is a brutal sentence. She insisted on deposing Eckerd in February, video recorded, and allowed her series of since withdrawn attorneys, long list of attorneys, to unwittingly use sonographic ex exhibits that she since admitted to doctoring. This is the same fake sonogram she flaunted, claiming she was pregnant with Eckerd's twins after showing up to court before judges, Duty and Galketsis, with an ostensibly fake pregnant stomach claiming she's 100% pregnant and due with twins on February 14th. That is a powerful sentence. That's a sentence to be reckoned with. <laughs> Lol, that turned legal vices on. Larax <laughs> is going back for napalm seconds. Oh, Lord. Wow. All right. This is not just a fake sonogram that was used in court proceedings, but petitioner, petitioner testified in the collateral protective order proceedings that her OBGYNs were Dr. Makul and that she was seen last Friday by Dr. Higley. Now, remember, that was part of the, this motion to compel lunch last week was, you know, she didn't say she was treated she said she sought medical treatment, but but was not, you know, she had to cancel or she wasn't able to get in, that, that sort of thing. It was like, oh, she sought what it, but she wasn't argument. actually treated. But now he, here he's going, she said she was seen last Friday by Dr. Higley. Boom goes the dynamite, as they say. Uh, you're, you're back. We've, we've got a couple of super chats that involve you. Sarah Adams with the $2. I cannot tell a lie. Megan, your hair is on point. Thank you. And my cat's an a-hole. <laughs> Jeff laughs like Snidely Whiplash's dog and Muttley. I love it. <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> Su Subi Sue 73 gifted one Legal Vices membership. If you got Subi Sue's gifted membership, congrats on you. And Special K also gifted one Legal Vices membership. If you got Special K L's. 
Legal Vices membership. Make sure you give her a super special thanks as well. And that has that has brought us to the point that we love to call Release the Hounds. And uh, we we have a sunbathing dog there. There's their special case membership. It kind of blends in with the light. We 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 can camera it down here and, and and look at Yoda's butt or yeah, let's just look at let, let's look at sleep peacefully sleeping. You can't you can't see Strawberry's head because it's right in the sunlight. She's like, there's a strip of sunlight coming through the window. I'm gonna lay in it. Should I wake her up so that she looks over this way? Sorry. No, don't wake her up. What's wrong with you? Don't wake Hello. up. Sleeping. Let sleeping dogs lie. Sorry, they just wanted to see your face. You can go back to sleep now. Pretend I didn't do that. She's like, what the fuck? She's like, what the I was hell? sleeping. <laughs> oh, she's judging me. <laughs> I feel judged. She's like, dumbass. Goes back to sleep. <laughs> Kayla Bird with $10. I haven't seen any of the court hearings, so I'm curious if anyone asked for the baby's death certificate. Yeah, the judge did because she said, Oh, I had this, I had the I'm no longer pregnant. And the judge said, I want now exactly when did that happen? That's when she started to backpedal and go, oh, oh, maybe it was in September, October. Once the judge said, oh, yeah, I need to know the exact date that happened because you could be in some serious, serious shit right now. Then she started backpedaling a bit. Here in Arizona, pregnancies that end at 20 weeks require one. Yeah, that's that's why once she realized that it was after 20 weeks and that this thing was a real thing and the judge was demanding to know, she backpedaled. She backpedaled real quick on that November date. Now it's all the way back to July. That's how far she backpedaled. An island, maybe Laura should sue Higley for malpractice. <laughs> oh, poor Higley. Don't do that to Higley Wiggly. He did, he did nothing or she did nothing. I'm not sure. Oh, Lord. They're underlined for our, our reading pleasure. There are no records that support these statements by petitioner, and the provider's absence of records confirms they never treated petitioner for pregnancy. Yeah. Now, contrary to the confounding responses, to this court's direct questions at the last status conference and her own medical records, her public postings seem to range to claiming her alleged miscarriage took place, either took place in July or even as late as November 2023. See email from Petitioner's Counsel dated 4 in Exhibit 1. Petitioner also presented evidence in these proceedings that included alleged videos of her pregnant stomach and statements by her neurologist that she looked 21 weeks pregnant if petitioner is now claiming she miscarried in July, she would not have grown visibly growing pregnant stomach that looked 21 weeks unless it was horribly infected or there was a tumor there. It's insane. She's insane. And her lawyer's insane. <laughs> While petitioner appears to have recently toned down her social media posts, her newest counsel has backfilled that's a great word to backfill that void with persistent Twitter and blog blog blog, blog posts. Does anyone really blog anymore? And outlines his theory of the case, including his anticipated motions and more. See generally postings, petitioners, counsel exhibit a, a sample of these postings below. Don't like my bio? Ask for details. I'm the Conor McGregor of litigation. Done this, done tons of family law cases. I don't list those because they're boring. Clayton's lawyers handled two federal cases. High profile cases go to federal court. Me, that's high profile cases don't go to federal court. You have there are certain requirements that must be met before you go to federal court. And there's a few certain requirements that mandate you go to federal court. It's not like, oh, this is a famous person. Let's go to federal court. That's not how it works. Me, 79 federal cases in 69 plus 10 and counting. Fuck these six selfish lying assholes. Should I clarify how I feel? These vile scum. I That's mean, us. people, yeah. That's people us. are not, they're not helping anything. They are human cockroaches spreading feces on the floor and then spinning the facts to make them more dramatic. In case you're not, you're, in case you're thinking Megan has some sort of megalomania and that uh, she's making this all about her and that, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, there's some random post and I think it's about me. No, th there's proof here at the end of this text that it's all about Megan and Tug. Oh, and by the way, Gala Bird's $10 Super Chat was her first live stream Super Chat ever. Wow. Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much for that. 
Uh, where are we at? Uh, spin in the facts to make them more dramatic than they really are in the hopes that this will drive traffic and increase revenue for their sad, pathetic lives. One day, these trash humans will wake up and realize that lying for money <laughs> is not a good way to live. Cough, cough. Uh, or maybe they will never see their sins. Either way, I look forward to reading their obituaries briefly before throwing them in the trash where they belong. Oh, wait, wait, wait is no, oh no, this wasn't the one. I thought that was the one that ended with, and they can buy breadsticks. <laughs> I, it might have been on there. It might have been on there. I but think it's part, it's part of the clipped. thread. I think yeah, because at, at the end of one of he these, he also it's like, called me a MAGA wannabe YouTuber. Yeah, where you have like. 300 times more subscribers than he does <laughs> well, and he times. says that i take up absolutely no space in his brain yeah <laughs> sure yeah oh good night alan walsh good night if you're <laughs> yeah see that was the thing is it is tug and tug and megan were, were, were joking about breadsticks and olive garden and all you can eat you know salad and breadsticks and things and then like this long string of text ended with they so they can get more super chat money and, and buy breadsticks <laughs> So it was clear they were talking about Megan. To be Tyler. fair, Dave was talking about that too. On his, yes. that's where it yeah. came from. Was Dave yeah, yeah, that's right, originally. And he true. definitely has a hard on for Dave. This is not complicated. Petitioner claims she has the bulk of the requested disclosure in her possession. Contrary to her testimony and statements to this court, through through her parade of prior attorneys, petitioner stated several times that he has the requested information, and she now ostensibly claims to have miscarried in July. Specifically, petitioner through counsel stated in emails that he has photos of the fetuses, the contact information for the telehealth provider, and the communication between petitioner and her sister, all of which is requested in the motion to compel, respondent's motion to compel. She told me, this This is quotes here, uh, let me speak with so-and-so about the request for the photo of Saks. Hate that word. Me too. She told me she has this photo available, and if she does, then I'll immediately provide it to you today. Same with the name of the telehealth provider. And then later that same day, having said all that, I just got off the phone with so-and-so, and she is sending me the Sack photo and the name of the telehealth person. Uh, uh, ick. Sack photo. Hashtag sack photo. Stop it. <laughs> Do not make me tweet that. Hashtag sack photo. Gross. As promised, I have talked to Redacted about the fetal sack photos. And she has produced copies of those photos to me. I have them in my possession right now. I am prepared to disclose these to you along with some additional information. Redacted found information showing a consult with a healthcare provider at the time the fetal sacks were discharged or whatever you call it. Yeah, or whatever you call it. Now, see, he's under a court order to give this information. He's, I'm prepared to disclose these for you. Buddy, you're not prepared. You're required to do it. Stop being prepared and start doing it. That's all. As I've mentioned before, I have photos you want to see. I probably don't want to see, but need to see is a better deal. I understand you want to give them to your experts. Greg, that is not going to be a problem. You're going to love the image dates because the image are dated July 23rd, 2023. I also Does have he text messages. what he's saying here? No, I don't think so. Like Maybe that's why he says he's going to love it because he knows it debunks her entire theory that she put forward. I don't know. No, this is like, I, I don't think he's, he's connected the timeline dots. He may have, but I can't see how. Because if he connects the timeline dots, yeah, you're going to love these because she's not pregnant before she filed the 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 lawsuit to have him held accountable. Yeah. That's not something that you really like. That does not fit your timeline at all, but I don't think he's connected the timeline dots. I also have the text messages between redacted and her sister dated July, 2023. I do have some telehealth info showing redacted seeking medical advice on July 23rd. So if he has all this stuff. Why hasn't he turned it over? He's required to do it. These are the exact things he's required to turn over. So saying I'm prepared to turn them over. Come on. You're, you you need to turn them over. Don't say, I'm prepared to do it. I'm, no, do it. Uh, so, something I'm willing to disclose. You're not willing to, you to disclose it. You are required by a court order to disclose it. Instead of just simply complying with Rule 49 and discussing the information he acknowledges having, counsel bombard, bombards respondent's attorney and his attorney's office. Uh Oh, this is this this is a very I don't I think this is a problem. I don't think he should have put this in the footnote. 
This should have been up in the, I mean, the court's going to read the footnote, but I think it should have been, it would have been more powerful in the body of, of this response. Notably, the photos were from 7-2023, as the current counsel is now claiming, but not disclosing, then every filing after that date is per se a violation of Rule 26, and the testimony at the deposition and the protective orders proceeding were all perjury, perjurious, mm -hmm. perjurious. Mm -hmm. That should have been, I think that should have been underlined and bolded in the body of mm. this response. Because that's connecting the dots right there. Yeah, that's pretty big. <clears throat> pretty big. But I think we've all kind of already put that together. If if this happened in July, she didn't file till yeah. August. That means every filing afterwards and every communication and every claim that she was pregnant was all a lie. And this is what David Gingras thinks that he can sue people for. He thinks that we can be sued for calling Laura Owens a liar. What? She is lying. Thank you, Special K. She's lied. She lied. Where's my button? Damn yeah. it. I need be my button. Before you think Special K, L, she also said, my sack is on the way. Oh, God. <laughs> May the power of Christ compel you not to use that word anymore. I'm filing a motion to compel <laughs> that we put a kibosh on the word sack from now on the power of christ compels you <laughs> who was it who could it possibly be was it oh i don't know say yes <laughs> that's the answer that's the definitely, answer definitely satan well, flux says can she get can he get in trouble for this if he if he if he can still say oh you know I I put this out before I saw the entire timeline and I apologize for doing it but yeah there is a potential that it could be very very bad for everybody involved on her side of the the equation. All uh, right, uh, so she's talking about the communication with the office staff. Council bombards respondent's attorney and his attorney's office staff with communications, comments about personal sanctions against attorneys, and suggestions that the state bar needs to be involved. Petitioner having already filed two complaints, dismissed, and at least two others against her prior attorneys, also dismissed, which we're going to probably not going to get to today. Because once we finish this, we've got to go find out what this new response to this is. Uh, so we might go a little longer than two hours. <laughs> but not six! I promise not six. <laughs> Okay, this is another email. Jesus, man, seriously? I mean, seriously? Does Clayton oh, yeah, mean that much to voice. you? You need to bring okay. back gay voice. All right. I got to wash I mean, that straight right out of my right, mouth. This is, again, this is an attorney. <clears throat> Just letting you know, this is an attorney writing this email. Yeah. This is a professional email from an attorney. To another attorney about a client. About a Jesus, case. Jesus, man. Seriously. Jesus. I mean, seriously, does Clayton mean that much to you? Fuck right he does. Yeah. He's a client. He's and, a paying mm. goddamn client. Not to like, mention. What are you gonna say? Go ahead. He's the second victim that Greg Woodnick has represented against this crazed woman. I mean, what's he supposed to do? Now my client means shit to me. No, his client does mean that much to him professionally and, as Megan just said, personally. So, look, I guess what's going to happen next is you can submit your proposed order to the, on the MTC to the court, and I'll, I'll respond and object to the order, and you'll probably have to file a motion asking for relief. Relief. Give me the relief. On the basis of fraud by you, this stuff is going to be messy. Oh, I like really messy. <laughs> If you won't agree to do something remedial, I need to be clear about what happens next. I'm going to file something explaining this crap to the judge, and I'm going to ask her to make a referral to the state bar. And that applies to both you and Isabel. <laughs> Isabel now knows that you've lied to the court multiple times. She cannot sit back and allow this to continue. I don't care if she's new, and I don't care if she hasn't signed any pleadings. That's irrelevant. Isabel cannot stick her head in the sand like a little goddamn ostrich. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> face down, butt near, can't do that. Uh, <laughs> she has an absolute duty under ER 8.3 to report professional misconduct, as do I. 
She also has an absolute duty under ER 48.4A not to help you violate the rules. If Isabella sits back and lets this go further off the rails without taking appropriate remedial steps, she is putting her own license in peril. Remember that from when we get down to the emails where he says, Isabel, I'm not threatening you. Yeah. <laughs> or, or we can do the, uh, the the Harvey Firestein voice. As a compromise, I offer this proposal. <laughs> Don't apply for fees right now. In return for you not taking fees right now, I will not. Ag- I will agree to not bring a motion asking for relief. Sweet relief. <laughs> Jesus, give me sweet relief from the MTC order on the basis of fraud. Like I said, I'm not happy about what I've recently learned, but if we can avoid fighting over that on the new issue now, it would be helpful for both sides. Uh, <laughs> mm, that one hurts. I, I'm still not it recovered. Sounds like that. it hurts. I'm not recovered from last week. <clears throat> Strawberries like lick it out. <laughs> no, and strawberries not. All righty. So petitioner's motion is also misleading. Ugh, unblew myself. How long is the actual thing? I don't remember being this long. Okay, good. It's ending on the next page. <laughs> then we get the newbie stuff. The newbie stuff. And there's a lot of exhibits. Yeah. So uh, that's that's why we're going to do these, and then probably later on in the week we'll go through the exhibits. Petitioner's motion is all, and thank you, thank you both sides for continuing to give me content. Uh, <laughs> petitioner's motion is also. I've already said that with the with the tortoise twins, if with the tortoise twins, with the tortoise farm, the if the tortoise thing gets resolved, converging. I'm moving in next door, and I'm going to be husband number eight. I'm going <laughs> to stir up shit with Jeremy just to keep it going. Uh, <laughs> same here. I'm 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 going to be victim number whatever it is just to keep this going. Uh, I'll volunteer to be victim number whatever. Uh, petitioner's motion is also misleading. The parties are communicating over email, and respondent is responding where appropriate. Undersigned has no ethical or legal obligation to expose himself to unnecessary criticism that is not conducive to resolution. While petitioner's counsel did eventually apologize for his toxic comments, the online activity continues, and the toothpaste is out of the tube. Can't put them back yep. in. Undersigned counsel realizes that filing this objection and bringing the above mentioned to the uh, to the attention of the court will likely escalate petitioner's tactics, but believes it is relevant for the court to have all information when considering petitioner's motion to compel lunch and alternative relief. This is not a complicated case, contrary to what petitioner promotes. Ab- n- he is the only person on planet Earth that is calling this a complicated case. Everyone else is going, I don't really think so. <laughs> Here's the medical records. Yay, nay, done. That's it. Not complicated. At all. Trial already continued once due to lack of due to same lack of disclosure is in June, and respondent is prepared to proceed and argue appropriate inferences consistent with the data set and lack thereof, and the court can enter relief as deemed appropriate. So yeah, whether or not this evidence is submitted, we're ready to go. We're either going to go and combat the evidence or we're going to say she didn't uh, you know, she didn't submit the evidence. Go ahead, judge. Infer whatever you want to infer from that. And respondent is entitled, is entitled to reasonable attorney fees. Wherefore, respondent re- respectfully requests the, pro- the court to deny petitioner's motion for lunch. <laughs> Grant respondent the, the leave to file a China doll affidavit for his reasonable attorney fees. Yeah, give him some fees and appropriate sanctions. Respectfully submitted. So that 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 is this motion. Now, on the fly, we've got to uh, download the reply. And th- thank you, thank you, Newt Gingras, for providing this reply. Uh, where are we at here? By the way, yes. the exhibits, the most important thing you need to know about the exhibits is that it just shows David Gingras is a liar. Because he said, How does Greg, it do that? Because he said Greg Woodnick wasn't responding to him. Yeah. And it is nothing but a bunch of emails between the two of them, tons of them. <laughs> tons Stop of emails. Letting the facts get in the way of a good legal story, Megan. I apologize. Mm-hmm. Boodoo berries with the five dollar Aussie bucks. Unless he's on a three year losing streak and broke his leg in the courtroom, I don't think Connor is is comparison is the comparison you want to make, douche canoe. <laughs> Th- thanks, Boodoo berries, Cynigan Chief, with also five more dollars. Is he dumb enough to sue Dave or Tug? Yeah, he's threatening it. As Megan said, with one hundred for one hundred and fifty million dollars. Tennessee has a strong anti-slap law. He'll have to pay their lawyer fees after it gets dismissed. And Seneca Chief also says, Douche Canoe is making several YouTubers a lot of money while, whilst criticizing. If you don't want us to make money, don't give us fodder. Don't give us fodder for our douche cannons. True. 
All right, we have downloaded this breaking motion. Have not laid eyes on this motion. This is new motion. Uh, I can't I wait for it. this. I haven't seen this. I'm very excited. Yeah, this is this is new stuff. Okay, I've downloaded it. I just haven't opened it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Is this the d response to the response this, yes. for the motion to compel? Yes, ma'am. God, I can't wait. To, I, I can just imagine Judge Mata's face <laughs> having to read 80,000 words over the weekend. Wait, I thought I downloaded it. Didn't I, I have it. Do, do you want me to send it to you? I have it. Maybe I maybe I saved it somewhere else. All right, we'll we'll just do it again. Why not? Download. Download it. This is this is this is a professional stream, folks. It is. This is what you get when you're is, Oh, yeah. I just downloaded it to my downloads folder. I didn't download it to the Eckerd folder. There now it's in the Eckerd folder. Ta da! All right, it's unclouding itself. There we go. Cynican Chief says, Chief says, this is super entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Jeff download files yeah. and forget where he put them. Oh, what's, damn it, why are you updating? There we go. All right. Share. Gollum. That's, that's, that's Yoda doing his Gollum impression. <laughs> he does that occasionally. I might what's have up, been Yoda? Me. It might have been me on the Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> what's up yoda dumbass all right we'll, we'll look at the pretty strawberry who's looking who's gazing out at the at the mountain in the sun all right this is this is brand new never before seen i have not laid eyes on this nor has megan you, you're you're seeing it, it normal here though to do a reply to a reply yeah it is yeah that's pretty that's, oh that's because that uh that's not the one we want, is it? Good thing there was nothing weird on the screen. Uh, it's not? It's <laughs> no, still I, not the right one? No, it's the right one. It was just on the wrong screen. Mm. All right. So, yeah, now we need to share this screen. That's the one we want. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> not that there would be anything weird. I'm just saying it's glad there wasn't. Uh, Maricopa County Superior Court, state of Arizona. Okay, that's way too embiggened. There we go. This is the reply in support of motion to compel lunch and for all and for alternative relief. All right, you need, you still need to probably yet yeah, we need to rein it in a little bit more. Move our slider over. This is this is what hey, I have no slider on this one. That makes me annoyed. All right. There we go. All right, ladies and germs, let's get into this. How many pages <clears throat> are we talking about here? Uh nine. Oh, at least it's not 70 again. And I'm sure a lot of it is, is skippable, but Okay, the question for the court is easy. Well, I thought it was complicated, but maybe it's a different question. Respondent's counsel, Greg Woodnick, Greg Woodnick has refused to speak with petitioner's counsel, David Gingras, by phone. False. He has by spoken phone. with him on the phone. It said that in there. They had, they did talk on the phone. Maybe, maybe he means since they filed the motion to, to compel lunch. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this has made it impossible to have any meaningful discussion regarding the large number of legal, factual, and evidentiary issues present in this unusual case. Yes, unusual. it is unusual. This impasse is particularly prejudicial with trial just 60 days away, and it has needlessly expanded. If not promptly addressed, it could delay the proceeding. Uh, explaining, don't do that. That's the, the Arizona rules of, yeah, go ahead. Parentheses. This guy with his parentheses yeah. kills me. Don't do that. While the reasons for this position are somewhat disputed and mostly irrelevant, oh, his position, are mostly irrelevant, there is no dispute about this. Mr. Woodnick's refusal to speak with the undersigned is not acceptable. No, his, he said, you give me the disclosure and then we'll, we'll talk. He said that. He just said, not, not now. Not now, New Gingras. Just wait for it. Wait for it. Not now. That's all he said. He did. He said, I'm making you wait for it, making you work for it. I need something yeah. first. Yep. Get, give me the disclosure and then we'll talk about meeting. It is contrary to mandatory rules which require counsel to meet and confer. Well, they may require you to meet, but not necessarily have lunch, dumbass. Uh, Mr. Woodnick's refusal is also contrary to the mandatory professional professionalism standards of the Arizona Supreme Court. See all this crap. Establishing duty for all lawyers to communicate with opposing counsel in an effort to avoid litigation and to resolve litigation that has actually commenced. 
Well, they've been, he's been trying to do that since uh, August. Okay, so the rules require lawyers to talk, but Mr. Woodnick won't talk. What, if anything, Elaine, should the court, what, if anything, should the court do about this? But Give it a whirl. There were so many emails yeah. between, between the two of them. Paragraphs and paragraphs. How is that not considered talking? Really, how is that not considered talk? To me, it's that this guy wants Greg off the record so he can threaten him and put him up against a wall by the throat and not have any witnesses. That's what he wants. <laughs> Blueberries. It really wouldn't surprise me if after all of this, she still thinks they can date and it'll be fine. <laughs> right. Uh, what if... What, if anything, I'm trying, Your Honor. Good world. What should the court do about this? <laughs> Petitioner's motion offered two pragmatic, if slightly unusual. Oh, he's got a footnote. Oh, Lord. Solutions. Order counsel to meet for lunch, hoping to meet would help increase communication and decrease the level of contentiousness. Who wants to eat with this dude? And slash or, in the alternative, waive the in-person conferral requirements of Rule 9C, which Mr. Woodnick has recently ignored anyway. Ugh, bitchy. If it was not clear in the motion, undersigned counsel strongly believes the meet and confer requirement is a good thing. Indeed, that process has already been significant, has already produced significant benefits in this case. Specifically, on January 3rd, 2024, respondent filed a motion, a Rule 26 motion for sanctions, asking, oh, he's, he's going off on the, we won the sanctions. He's going to go off on that. Uh, for sanctions, asking the court to punish Ms. Owens for fabricating her pregnancy claims, the motion and the assertions contained therein largely dominated this proceeding for the last three months, resulting in both sides incurring many thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands, in attorney fees and costs, even though all other paternity issues were not the case. Footnote one, in his 23 plus years of vigorous litigation. How vigorous was it? So vigorous. <laughs> all the vigor. All the vigor. <laughs> <laughs> in the 23 plus years of his vigorous litigation practice, oh, involving many cases far more contentious than this, undersigned counsel has never encountered a situation where opposing counsel refused to talk by phone. I find that hard to believe. I find it hard to believe that no one has ever refused to talk to him. But, ugh, it's him again. Tell him I'm golfing. Tell him I died. Oddly and inexplicably, before filing the Rule 26 motion, Mr. Woodnick failed to provide the mandatory 10-day notice and safe harbor period required by Rule 26. See, this, all this has nothing to do with this motion. In other words, in his motion furiously attacking Ms. Owens and demanding sanctions for her alleged violation of Rule 26, Mr. Woodnick himself violated Rule 26 by filing a pleading that failed to comply with the mandatory procedural steps of that rule, uh, which Mr. Woodnick is saying... Uh, it actually did comply with the rules for reasons that I'm, I, I, I haven't seen or got into yet, but I just know he's like, uh, no, I don't think we violated that. That ironic error, which is non-waivable and non-curable, meant that the court was literally without authority to even consider Mr. Eckerd's request for Rule 26 sanctions, blah, 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 discussing return, blah, 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 and explaining when a party fails to follow the strict notice and safe harbor requirements of the rule, a trial could literally the trial court literally lacks the power to impose Rule 11 sanctions. We must reverse the award sanctions where the challenging party failed to comply with the safe harbor provisions, even when the underlying filing is frivolous. Emphasis added. Yeah, all of this has nothing to do with this. He's just going, look at me, I won. Which he really didn't. I mean, it's... You no, know, he anyway. was like threatening to like um, not only run up legal fees but then appeal even if the judge ruled yeah. with woodnick on this rule 26 bullshit so greg was like all right i'm gonna withdraw it could, could the judge order her to therapy unfortunately no uh, <laughs> this is just do you do you owe do you owe attorneys fees or not um at this point the law on this issue was and is so clear upon discovering the problem, undersigned counsel immediately asked to meet and confer with Mr. Woodnick to get his side of the story. Mr. Woodnick's initial response was extreme resistance and a refusal to concede the mistake. That caused Ms. Owens to incur significant additional fees drafting a motion to resolve the Rule 26 issue as a matter of law, which, if filed, would have included a request for sanctions against Mr. Woodnick based on his clear violation of the rule, 
coulda, woulda, shoulda. That process, while admittedly not the friendliest experience, ended with Mr. Woodnick withdrawing the deficient Rule 26 motion, which he could refile at any time on April 3rd, 2024. This shows the conferral process can and does work. Yeah, so basically what I got out of that was he withdrew the motion. He's like, I don't, I don't, it's not worth the fighting over. This is not the real important thing. This is not really why we're here. Yeah. Okay, I'll withdraw. He was getting rid of a headache. Yeah. This guy's entire like mode of operating as a lawyer is to give you the biggest headache you've ever had and hope that you just quit. Oh, for Fox's sake, says Sarah Adams. <laughs> Dude, you, we need your Fox button. That's the weirdest noise. It is. Foxes <laughs> are weird. I told people when they join the Fox den, it's weird in here, man. Uh, there we are. At the time, the meet and confer process is only effective and efficient when the lawyers can talk about the issues in real time, either face to face or on the phone. That is why the rule expressly warns email communications cannot stand alone, satisfying the duty to confer. The court should not. Okay, I'm looking at this. Here. I, I kind of disagree with. I disagree with that rule. If that is the rule, I disagree with it. It's now, just now making see, everyone waste everybody's time. By oh, uh, now you have to get on the phone with the guy to say the same thing I just said in my email. See, there's a couple of things in here. Like, notice how this. Can you see that this part is grayed and this part down here is not gray? Oh, I can say. I can it, see. Did it's he here copy a lot. And paste? Yeah, see, I'm thinking he's copying and pasting this shit from another document. From where? I don't know, but yeah, you can see the it's it's been highlighted. Maybe it's highlighted for the court. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, but, maybe the copy he gave, he likes to put colors in his documents, yeah. so it's very possible he highlighted it in several different yeah. colors. Yeah, but I just thought it was weird, like cut and pasty job or something. Yeah, so that I does hate look that. strange. When I don't want to type out something really long and I cut and paste it, and there's all like this these damn gray bars. I'm like, God damn it, I got to type it out. Uh, but notice how he's actually sounding a little more, a little more restrained and a little more uh, composed in in this motion than previous motions. Well, he got embarrassed by the last one, showing that yeah. all of his communications were so nasty and like he was ex trying extortion and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe he's 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 calming down. Discussion, dis discuss amongst yourselves. Ms. <laughs> Owens has complied with her disclosure obligations. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so, because the judge specifically ordered some things that nobody's seen yet. In her brief, rather than addressing the merits of the problem, I mean, in his brief, Mr. Woodnick begins with a straw man argument. Uh, it's, straw man is one word. Uh, he says he should not be required to comply with Rule 9C because he claims Ms. Owens has not produced the information required by the order, granting Mr. Eckerd uh, motion to compel. This argument is both pointless and wrong. I don't know. It seems like the judge gave me till Friday to do it. So apparently the judge didn't think it was pointless and wrong. Uh, but go ahead. Let's hear you out. First, Mr. Woodnick's duty to confer exists independently of Ms. Owens' duty to disclose information. No, so so uh, it's it's pointless because it has nothing to do. No, it's, it, that, that makes no sense. His duty to confer exists independently of Ms. Owens' duty to disclose information. So therefore, we complied. That doesn't make any sense. Even if Ms. Owens was a was derelict in her do, in her disclosure duties, ooh, Mr. Alliteration, derelict in her disclosure duties, which she absolutely is not. That would give that would not give Mr. Woodnick free reign to ignore the rules of these proceedings. Second, the order granting the motion to compel was not filed until yesterday, April tenth, and it states Ms. Owens was not required to produce any information until April eighteenth. Thus, Ms. Owens' disclosure is not even due yet. Despite this, Mr. Owens fully complied. Ms. Owens fully complied with the order the same day it was issued. Thus, even if a lack of disclosure on Mr. Ms. Owens' part somehow allowed Mr. Woodnick to ignore all the rules, that excuse no longer exists. I, that's not clearly. I see. You don't have to do this with Woodnick's motions. You don't have to go back and reread things to try to figure out what the hell he's talking about. No, you do not. Dave Neal's in the chat. Dave. Dave Neal, you have the you, you, fellow you, pond you, scum journalist. Wayne. Yeah, and yeah, he he had the link. He just ignored us. We're not good enough for Dave Neal. <laughs> Dave Neal's special. 
Dave's got a lot going on. He's got I a wife know. who's about ready to give birth and and he's got to order her around to make pizza and bring him Dr. <laughs> Pepper and things. He's busy. He's busy giving orders to his his highly pregnant one. We love you. He had to go to the the Cracker Barrel earlier <laughs> and take he had to take Tasha for Cracker Barrel. It's a very busy schedule. She's eating for two. Do what she says. <laughs> Back off of Dave. You know yeah. I don't like it when people go after Dave Neal. I will I will uh, I will mess you up. He's comforting the wifey, as you should. That that was that was one that was probably the one thing I learned from my marriage. When she's pregnant, you just do it. <laughs> Whatever she, it is. Yeah. Well, the ex she didn't have any like the really <laughs> weird cravings, but there was one that just about made me lose my shit. It was two o'clock in the morning, and she wanted to have like Korea. It's, it's Sunday. It's like blood sausage. Okay. She started craving blood sausage from a particular restaurant 45 minutes away. It's a 24 hour place. But so not only is she craving the blood sausage from this, this restaurant 24 hours away, 20, 45 minutes away, she had never been to that restaurant before. Yeah. She was craving food from a place she'd never been. And after some tears, I made the hour and a half round trip to get her her stupid blood sausage. But yeah, you, you, you always comfort the wifey. I uh, love you guys. If Tasha passes out, I'll sneak into the cave and join you. Yeah, we've got about six more pages to get through here. So we could be next Tuesday before we finish. Uh, but this is the newest filing. This is the response to the response to the emotion to compel lunch. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's, see what we've, let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, where are we at? So I don't understand this. I said, you don't have this problem with Wood, Woodnick's motions. You know exactly what he's saying because he says it so well. Here we've got this where I've read three paragraphs. And I don't know what any of it means. So he's saying. I know. He claims Ms. Owens hasn't produced the information. This is pointless and wrong. It's pointless because he his not meeting has nothing to do with the disclosure. That doesn't. And then it's wrong because. If the motion was to compel was not filed until yesterday and she's done it. Well, if she's done it, where, where is it? He's saying that she, she's given this disclosure. No, that's weird. Strongly worded remarks. Do not excuse the duty to confer in his brief opposing the request for lunch. Mr. Wooden excites a handful of emails and online comments from the undersigned. In effect, his argument is, Gingras said mean things to me. I don't like it, so I should not have to talk to him. Okay, now he's, he's back to being petty now. There we go. He's, he's back to being petty. Good. Whew, I thought we were having a, a change of heart. <laughs> Thank you for making sure we're not. To be fair, Mr. Woodnick is correct, but only partially. Some degree of invective exists in some emails. Oh, he's admitting he was a dick in his emails. <laughs> some degree of invective exists in the emails. Yeah, you were being a dick in your email, dude. <sighs> some degree of invective. What an ass. And in some online comments. It's, yeah, you short bus people. You, 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 yeah, uh, you, you, you special ed kids. You know, and all this like fuck you, and you go fuck yourself, and you you you're a cockroach, you're a pond scum. I hope you die so I can throw your obituary in the garbage. And and you know, Dave can't buy his breadsticks, and neither can Megan and Tug. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, there was there was there was some degree of invective. I would agree with him. In some emails exchanged between counsel and in some online comments, few if any of which were actually directed at Mister Woodnick. That much is true. Oh, so it's okay to address. As a lawyer, you're this this uh, this shit talking to other people. I guess what is missing from Mr. Woodnick's objection is context. It's always about the context. Although he provides copies of the emails buried in his sixty plus pages of exhibits and selectively quotes a few choice examples, Mr. Woodnick never explains to the court why these strongly worded remarks were made. I would say it's irrelevant and unimportant why they were made. You don't have to write professional letters like. You never have to write like in 28 years, damn near 29 years of being a lawyer. I have never, never written anything remotely like that in an email, either to a colleague 
or to a an opponent or, or you know, opposing counsel or anything. I have never written an email with anything like that. No, it's really unusual. It's really strange. I mean, and if you look at the emails between Greg and Corey, um, they're not anything like that. They're, you know, just like I'm writing I mean, to a colleague, you know, someone who's a friend, like, listen, I know that, you know, your client wants to believe this, but here's what we have. And it's a bad situation all around. And, you know, nobody's calling anybody names. Nobody's threatening to go to the bar. It just, uh, the, the, I've, I've gotten, I've gotten lots of emails like that because, you know, some lawyers are just dicks. And they, they enjoy th- me, you know, throwing their weight around and trying to impress you or intimidate you. And the closest I ever came was responding to an email where I said, look, you can be a zealous advocate for your client without being an asshole. Yeah. And that's not, that's the closest I've ever come to saying anything like that. And I was just, you know, don't be an a-hole. Uh, what am I well, doing? Well, okay. I mean, that, that this is this is, goes so far beyond. And he came in yeah. like that. He came yeah. in like a hurricane. Like a wrecking ball. <laughs> Let's keep that up. We got to do that two days in a row. We need wrecking ball two days in a row. <laughs> we need pond scum on a wrecking ball. You he came in track? like a scantily clad Miley Cyrus on, on a gigantic <laughs> ball. <laughs> I mean, it's just really weird. I, I've seen a lot of court documents. I've seen a lot of emails between lawyers. I've never seen anything like this ever in my life. I've never. Yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of common because some lawyers are just dicks, but it's uncalled for. It's never, never necessary. Might be common, but I've never seen it. I've never seen anything like this. This is very unusual. Well, I guess I should say it's not uncommon. It doesn't actually mean it's just, you know, you'll get you'll get the occasional. You know, I mean, unless you're talking you about something that Nick Ricada would send on a copyright violation uh, letter. <laughs> uh, then right. I have I that I've seen that, you know, that's worse than this. But this I, between lawyers like who are actually working on a case together, I've never seen like this. <laughs> Cindy Kanjeev says vices did go to the bar, hence the headache. Yeah, the, the headache is about 90% gone, so we're good. I'm, I'm recovering. Another another four or five liters of water should take care of it. <laughs> uh, so let's let's see why. Let's see why he made let's see why he lost control in, in his email. Wh- where, where did the bad one dick touch you? Because that point is key. Oh, the, oh, that's the key to understanding the undersigned's unusually strong tone. Being mean slash rude slash argumentative for no reason is one thing. Being mean slash rude slash argumentative for good reason is entirely different. No, it's not. There is never, never a reason to be mean or rude. Be argumentative, yes. But there's no reason to be rude to somebody in a professional context. It's just just not. There's no reason whatsoever. No. He's 51, isn't he? The chat wants to know how old he is. Yeah, he, I think he's 51. One. I think he's three years younger than me. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, f- about 51. That's right. Since Mr. Woodnick fails to offer any context, this reply will do. Here's the genesis of the problem. There's clear and compelling proof Mr. Woodnick lied to this court in the motion to compel. <laughs> That's a serious uh, allegation. I so still can't see. figure out what he thinks he lied about. I, I oh. honestly can't. Oh, the disclosure. He's going to tell us. He's going to tell us now. Oh, he's got to be kidding. He's got let's look at kidding. exactly what the claim is based on. In the motion to compel filed on March 11, 2024, Mr. Woodnick accused Ms. Owens of essentially ignoring her Rule 49 disclosure obligations. Specifically on page six of the motion, Mr. Woodnick made the following representation to this court. Petitioner has willfully and wantonly failed to disclose information pursuant to Rule 49. After the status conference before this court, petitioner provided minimal disclosure after evading any compli- any compliance. Oh, this is mi- I gave him one document, so therefore any is wrong. That's what he's going to do. That that's this is the you know, this is a lawyer fucking around with words again. The she sought medical treatment but never actually got it, <laughs> except for when she said she just saw the guy two days ago. Uh, yeah, so that's that. She saw it. It's just this wordplay. Wordplay is it? Is it? You 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 use these semantics. Well, this is like he, this is when you get him. caught with your hand in the cookie jar. I wasn't reaching for cookies. I was reaching into the cookie jar where the cookies happen to be. I wasn't reaching for the cookies. <laughs> Look what it says, though. And like he quoted Greg saying, petitioner provided minimal disclosure after evading uh-huh. any compliance. So that doesn't mean she didn't turn over yeah. anything. Uh-huh. It means she turned over not enough things. 
as previously explained in Ms. Owens' motion, seeking additional time to respond to the motion to compel, when he was first retained by Ms. Owens, undersigned counsel did not have a complete copy of Ms. Owens' file, and thus was not in a position to directly respond to Mr. Woodnick's allegations regarding disclosure. Unfortunately, this court denied the undersigned's request for additional time resulting in the motion to compel being granted essentially by default without allowing a full or any response. Ooh, he's getting pissy with the judge now. Unfortunately, the judge didn't allow full or any response. Eh. It was granted by default. He's getting pissy with the judge, and the judge is going to see that. Of course, the truth always comes out in the end. Ms. Owens' former counsel, Corey Keith, finally provided a copy of Ms. Owens' file to the undersigned on Tuesday, April 2nd, due to the massive size of the file, vigorously reviewing the massive size of the file. 10 plus gigabytes, the file took approximately an hour to download. <laughs> U.S., you need to step up your damn internet. I can download 10 gigabytes in about five minutes. Uh, Why is he even putting this in a motion? This is so un unnecessary. The judge does not care that the file was so large it took you an hour to download it. You're just making her read this shit? Like, for yep. what purpose? Well, how is does he think this is ingratiating himself to the judge by putting in a bunch of words that don't need to be here? He's whining. Look at it. Literal, literally. 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 While this file was downloading. <laughs> This court this denied court. Ms. Owens' request. <laughs> literally. 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 Well, literally. literally. <laughs> See, that's what's funny. We, we were speculating. Little that she girls. Had... Everywhere I look, I see them. Are you done yet? <laughs> Sorry. I've been really good. <laughs> you have. I've been sitting here eating my Pringles, minding my own business. <laughs> But, you know, I went down an yeah. Annie rabbit hole for two seconds and suddenly I'm the problem. Suddenly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> One uh, day I'll step on their freckles. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm done. Tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> I'll do <laughs> you. Tomorrow, $150 million <laughs> is just a day away. <sighs> tomorrow. Oh, sorry. Oh, let's see. Before I... Uh, See, we were speculating that the judge denied the uh, the motion for additional time, the motion to continue before he finished the was it thirty nine pages or whatever the hell it was before he, before he finished printing it. She denied it, but apparently she denied it while he was downloading the file. It's <laughs> awesome. Literally, while well, the file was Literally. downloading, this court denied Ms. Owen's request for an extension at five oh one p. Oh my now God, he's, he's gone, judge. judge Grudge, and now he's blaming the judge. Yeah. Before I had an opportunity to review the materials provided by Mr. Yeah. Keith, it's all your fault, Judge Mata. You, you yeah. denied it. You denied it. But I it love how I he's going full file. Judge Grudge. You, you denied it at 5:01 p.m. on April 2nd, 2024. 5:01 <laughs> in 22 seconds. Yeah. He's gone full Judge Grudge. Great. <laughs> Before undersigned counsel had an opportunity to review the materials provided by Mr. Keith, what Mr. Woodmick, this um, remember in case you forgot, this is his reasons why he was pissy, rude, and obnoxious in his emails. What Mr. Woodnick failed to tell the court, and what the undersigned counsel did not know at the time, is that Mr. Woodnick's representations were knowingly false. Okay, now he's calling another lawyer a liar in an official court filing. Now it's I'm, I'm assuming that Mr. Woodnick is going, okay, it's on. Contrary to Mr. Woodnick's representations, Mr. Keith did, in fact, provide a detailed Rule 49 disclosure. And it's Dave Neal, the host of, of Bachelor Nation oh Rush God. Hour. Hello, how are you? How are she you? She passed sir? out, did she? <laughs> yeah, a little help from me. I just kind of hit so, her on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> so tucked in. Like said, like, ready. You know. She so long the really Vulcan tent. <laughs> yeah, I said, go get ready for bed and I'll meet you in there. And she, of course, knows I get to play with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well welcome we're we're in the final stages of the of the response to the response to lunch requests how exciting yeah uh, and, he, and now he's he's explaining i, I don't know if you're if you're listening it's all but the judge's fault he's now explain he said uh up, up here i love i love this this bullshit up here where was it yeah 
the key point to understand is that the undersigned's unusually strong tone, being mean, rude, and argumentative for no reason is one thing, but being mean, rude, and argumentative for good reason is entirely different. He's trying to he's trying to justify here why he was a yeah, bitch that's in totally his email. Different. That's yeah, why he was totally whiny different. and rude. And for some reason, it has something to do with the judge not allowing him more time to review the record. And, and his whatever. slow Wi-Fi download speed. Yeah. Some people have been telling me I've been living rent-free in his head. Mm -hmm. That's what they're he saying. Seems to be. I don't know if it's <laughs> a crush on me or something. <laughs> Start charging him rent. He definitely has a, a hard on for you, Dave. I don't know. I think he's gonna and compel you to go to lunch next. Ooh. I'll, I'll if he I can help him get into stand-up comedy if that's what he wants. I don't know. Maybe maybe he's just working his bits out through the motions. <laughs> Can you stop talking about working out bits and compelling other men to do things? That's not I will bring out the Broadway again. Don't make <laughs> me start singing. <laughs> I will do it. The bits will come out tomorrow. <laughs> you can bet your bottom $150 million. Um, <laughs> sorry, I've gone Ethel Merman now. Weird. Um, <laughs> Where the hell were we? Can you get back to this? Oh, yes. All right. Uh, well, what was Ethel Merman's big song? Uh, everything's coming up, roses. No, 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 not that one. It's what? on it's it's on the edge of my brain. The one Marilyn Monroe was in the movie with her. It was her big song. And, well, how do I not remember this? It'll come to me in about 15 minutes and I'll start belting it out. Sweet baby Jesus. This may be the worst ADHD <laughs> trip we've ever gone on. <laughs> What was the big hit that Ethel Merman sang? <laughs> that might be the worst. There's sidebar. no business, business like, like no business, business like, like no business. I like no. That's it. Right, That's see. the one. <laughs> Dave's leaving. <laughs> Dave's out. He's like, damn it. No, Dave's gone. Oh, he, he didn't Dave's just like, go I backstage. Can't... He literally left. No, he literally left. He literally go, he he literally left. He was like, "We can't do this. I'm not doing this." That's <laughs> he's back. Was my was my leaving when you were singing funny? I, I hope that was funny. <laughs> was, like, was this rude of me? I thought it was funny. <laughs> yes. Well, be, being rude for no reason is one thing, but being rude for a reason is entirely different. <laughs> you walked me. <laughs> My wife's like, you left me for this? What did you do? <laughs> it was like it was like the giant hook. Dave just brought out a giant hook. Like, That's Dave looks so confused. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, That's I got enough. lightheaded with that one. That was funny. That's enough. <clears throat> Eat a Snickers, Jeff. <laughs> Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Uh, no, right. we're not, we'll stop. Just keep reading. Oh, focus. This is all my focus. fault. The, the, I'm sorry, the, this is all my fault. See, I just need a good hangover to keep me in focus, but the hangover is wearing off, so now the mind is 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 running a month. You should show Dave the picture of the cab you got in last night. Oh yeah, that was a. Oh, I it saw was, it. I saw I your. Saw uh, yeah. yeah. Four a.m. Drunk off Very my ass, colorful. and I'm just like, "What is going on here?" <laughs> it, was, it was colorful. <sighs> all right. Speaking of colorful, we still have to find out why he he's justifying being a dick. Okay. Professional. Uh, yeah. What Mr. Woodnick failed to tell this court and what undersigned counsel did not know at the time is that Mr. Woodnick's representations were knowingly false. Contrary to Mr. Woodnick's representation, Mr. Keith did in fact provide a detailed Rule 49 disclosure statement on February 23rd, 2024, before the motion to compel was filed. Petitioner's initial Rule 49 disclosure respectfully submitted 23rd day of February 2024. Well, I, I'm sure the judge would know that. Uh, the, the, it's part of the judge's deal. But notice how he doesn't say that they covered probably. I haven't. I'm not going to go back and read it. But if it's something that was addressed in this, it probably wouldn't be in the new motion, and the judge would be aware of what her previous orders are. So, just saying. Having now reviewed the files from Mr. Keith, it is clear that Mr. Woodnick lied to the court when he claimed Ms. Owens evaded her Rule 49 disclosure obligations and had refused to provide any disclosure for over eight months. Now we know why Mr. Woodnick would not agree to a voluntary extension of time. He was trying to hide this fact from the court, from the undersigned well, but counsel. But he still hasn't said, how is this a lie? What What is it that she disclosed that uh, 
I don't, I have, have we got there yet? Did I pass out nope. for a minute? Nope. We okay. still have no idea what the hell's going on here. All right. This is All just right. weird. <sighs> I'm confused. I'm confused. This also explains why the, the conferral certificate attached to the motion was so vague. It suggests Mr. Woodnick talked about disclosures with Mr. Keith on February 2nd and February 21, just days before Ms. Owens' disclosures were served. The conferral certificate also references a single email sent on March 8, 2024, requesting a meet and confer without any further in-person follow-up as the rule requires. Well, what else? Uh, uh, he still hasn't explained why it's okay to be pissy and rude and mean and say horrible things to other people. Upon seeing this information, undersigned counsel was shocked, shocked, and to be candid, pretty angry. Uh-oh. Okay. I, 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 I'm I pretty angry. I still don't see the big lie. Like, what? What? Okay. I'm waiting for uh, it. Yeah. I'm waiting for the big reveal. Why does he get angry so easily? <laughs> so He's much, insecure. We compel so some much, therapy here, maybe? Motion to, compel motion, therapy. To compel therapy. Motion, to, motion to compel dad to give you a hug you didn't get in Little League. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mo motion to compel blood sugar. Just, you know, chill. <laughs> if you start smelling toast, Gingrich, uh, or whatever your name is, <laughs> back off. Gingrich. Yeah. He's been Newt calling Gingris. him Newt. Newt yeah, Newt, Newt Gingrich. Because <laughs> I just know he would love to be compared to such, such an upstanding monster. conservative politician. I know he'd like that comparison. And it kind of goes along with the whole pond scum theme. Yeah. There's yeah, now newts need... in the pond scum. It's <laughs> it's very funny. A lawyer who lies that specifically and that willfully is rightly subject to verbal criticism, if not significant other professional consequences. He's throwing down. He's taking off the white glove and doing the slappy thing. It's it, really it? unusual, by the way, to in a filing say that the opposing counsel is lying. It's yes, really he, unusual. You say he, things he, like misrepresented. Shows yeah. a lack of candor towards the court. Yeah, but it is very rare. I have never seen. And I know that like Greg Anderson hated Jay Hatch's lawyers. I don't think he put in one motion that they lied. You know, that's the, that's that's pretty strong language for a uh, court filing. Well, and again, he's three years younger than me, presumably been practicing about the same amount of time. And as I said in the first motion that he filed, it's like it was written by a, a 12 year old. It's like a, like a, some lawyer who has never done this before because mm -hmm. you just don't talk like this. No, motion. nobody talks like this. Like this is it's almost like he writes the way he thinks lawyers in movies write. See, this but is not why lawyers in real life. This is why I I love listening to you guys talk because I wouldn't know. It, it's almost like if you were professional singers, and I would be like, "Does that po person's voice suck?" You know, like it sounds like it sucks, but I, I want to hear from you. And then you're like, "Oh yeah, that's a terrible voice." I'm like, "Okay, yeah. okay." He he wants to hear us sing. I think is what he's saying, Megan. I think he wants more singing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a wrecking ball one more time, please? <laughs> Came in like a wrecking ball. There we go. That's as much as I know of that song. Uh, it's thankfully, all you need to know. trust me. That's <laughs> yeah, the only part that was any good. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, <laughs> where are we at here? As noted in the request for additional time to respond to the motion, Mr. Woodnick also made other representations with the state of discover about the state of discovery, which later found which were later found to be false. For instance, Mr. Woodnick informed undersigned counsel before he had a copy of Ms. Owens' file that the file contained no medical records to support Ms. Owens' claim. The, the, the to support Ms. Owens' claims is the important part about that sentence. Yeah. Yeah. No medical records to support Ms. Owens' claims. Why didn't he put all of that in parent in in his quotes? Mm -hmm. And that all medical providers provided providers named by Ms. Owens had confirmed that they never had a patient. Again, it's it's just bullshit semantics thing. He said all, but one of them did. He lied. Right. But of course, the providers that said they didn't have her as a client, as a patient were the providers that could confirm a pregnancy. They were the pregnancy doctors. We don't care that she had a neurologist. We don't care. That doesn't, that she, that's not a doctor that can confirm a pregnancy. We don't care that she had an urgent care doctor. We don't care that she had uh, another doctor on some telehealth medicine thing that wasn't an OBGYN. We don't care about those providers. 
We care about the OBGYNs. We care about Dr. McCool and Dr. Higley. Those are the only doctors that matter in this. But her astrologer said she might yeah. be pregnant this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one might. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we needed she that one. Lied. Oh, uh, the there it back. is. The button's <laughs> back. It's not my button, but it's back. Oh, okay. My yeah, stream deck got wiped out, so. So you, it, it's Dave's responsibility to, Dave's to, yeah. to, to Dave pick up the, the he lied button and, and run it up the mountain like Iwo Jima. <laughs> he's, got the, <laughs> he's got the lied button. Perfect. Uh, the, b- both of those statements were later found to be completely false. You see, the, try this with somebody. When Next time you're like, Megan, you're, you're the you're the only one with age with children that would are the age to do this. I've told you a thousand times not to do this. Your, your kid says, you're a liar, mom. You only told me 400 times. What would your reaction be? <laughs> you're grounded. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what he's doing. He said, oh, but there really, there was one or, or however many there was. It's, it's just him. Like I said, it's, I didn't, I, I know you caught me with my hand in the cookie jar, but I wasn't, reaching for the cookies i was just putting my hand in the jar i never touched the cookies that kind of thing that dishonesty is what caused the breakdown in communication between the undersigned and mr woodnick this has nothing to do with any social media comments and it has nothing to do with the timing of ms owen's compliance with the order compelling disclosure the problem is that the undersigned council does not like being lied to and neither should this court does not like being lied to. Here, the breakdown in communication occurred immediately after undersigned counsel brought these issues up and asked for an explanation. Rather than explaining himself, Mr. Woodnick simply clammed up and refused to respond. Well, if someone keeps calling me a liar every time I say something, I'm just going to go, fuck it, I'm not talking to you anymore. Well, right. It's totally reasonable that Craig's like, uh, I think maybe all my communications with this guy should be in writing. It's kind of like when you go to, you know, divorce court or custody mm-hmm. or whatever, and you've got like this, this ex who will not communicate properly with you. And so you have to do it through this court of uh, this court app that you, you have to communicate through a specific app that the court assigns you to communicate through because somebody's playing dirty. And I almost feel like he should be assigned this app. Like the judge ought to be like, Uh, yeah, you now can only communicate with Mr. Woodnick through this court ordered app because you're a dick. (laughs) No, that you're, you're not wrong. Right. Yeah. That's courts deal with this kind of shit all the time. They deal with it all the time, especially with people going through custody disputes where the court's like, yeah, you're not allowed to contact each other anymore on a regular phone. So you got to go through my, uh, my family app or whatever it's called. (laughs) But there's an app for not talking to your family members. Yeah, and it's oh my it's, god, and it's monitored by the court. Oh, so no. anything you send can and will be used against you in family court. So if you USA, are sending USA. Shit, if you're sending shit to your significant other that is like you know threatening or you know any of this stuff. You probably shouldn't put dick pics in that then, huh? Yeah, don't do your sexting. <laughs> well, why, would, why, why would you send those to family members anyway? Forget that. I withdraw. <laughs> Wait. Sometimes you just want to say hi with a dick pic. Uh, <laughs> yes. I it's it's kind of like this. I um whenever I have like my Facebook community, if someone starts fighting with somebody else in the community, I get so pissed because I take time out of my day to see who started it, who's right, who's I feel like the dad in the station wagon ready to return, you know, turn this thing right around. <laughs> and I kind of feel like the judge is probably the same way. She's like, Are you kidding me? Like we I don't know if they do they ever do this where she just says meet me in my office. Can can we have oh, like yeah. a principal's office moment here where she yeah. compels them and she's just like, can we not have this dick measuring contest in front of me, please? Well, I oh, know she that when she absolutely do that. Yeah, and I and know like will. when she got about to just this part reading it, she went, "Oh Christ!" Now he's going to respond to this response to the response. <laughs> <laughs> and he's How already responses to the responses to the responses are we going to have here he's yeah. already made it clear right that he's going to file an appeal based on that rules that sanction thing yeah so yeah. Ugh, it just i mean i guess he would only do that if she's paying him to do that well yeah he's threatening to do it but he now he can't because the sanction motion for sanctions was dropped right was withdrawn so he can't do that but he is threatening to do all kinds of other, he's threatening to drag this out as long as possible and run up the bill and he's literally said that in his in his filings i mean in his emails and stuff 
So well, speaking of paying the bills, let's uh, let's uh, you know got to pay the bills here. Mad DT MDDV TV. The any refers to the previous eight months of non-disclosure. GW acknowledged our current disclosure is minimal. Go back and read the quote again. Okay. Still, it's semantics. They. Uh, t- I don't know where the quote is. Otherwise, I'd actually go back and scroll up, but I, I don't think we can find it. But so the pre- any refers to the previous eight months of non-disclosure. Greg Woodnick acknowledged her current disclosure is minimal. So, yeah. So you go back yeah. and read the quote, uh, Newt Gingrich. Uh, All <laughs> whatever right, listen, your name is. I got to run because I got a couple Uh-oh. more things I need to do. So I'm going to pop out. But uh, we, I you, think I think we are we are almost done. We we got like another half page. And a couple super chats. I know, but I've, oh, I have to finish my okay. I have to finish my timeline in the next half hour. You know, Alrighty. Nick's going to be like an like an hour late too. So yeah. I'm going to. All righty, but I'm going to listen. All right. Let, let's see if there are any super chats here for you to, to deal with. Nope. Okay. Get out of here, Megan. Go away. All right. Thank see you very much, you Megan. Later. Bye. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing. How are you holding right. up? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> That's good. Uh this is this is rough. Well, uh, Greg Woodnick voice. She lied. She, she lied. lied. <laughs> I, I, I feel love seeing so many friendly faces in the chat. What a nice little mutual audience we now have. Yeah, well, it's all thanks to you to, for, oh. for, for for bringing this to light and and to for, for sticking through it to the end. All you got to do is me a good fight. all these people show up when I get sued. So who knew? <laughs> It's entertaining for us. No, see, and that's what, that's what we want to talk about all these things. It's it's content for us. It's semi-amusing for us, but we're not going through it. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the you 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 holding up through all this and you sticking through this is I mean, it's gotta be just gutting, taxing. It's uh, it's it. something. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to keep my wife out of it. And um, it's hard when you live together. You know, yeah. she hears voice notes and phone calls and lawyers. I mean, there was one the other day we were running an errand and she had I mean, within within a five minute span, we had like four different lawyers called. You know, we're putting our house in a trust. You know, we're doing all these things that I don't think I should have to do, but we're doing to try to protect ourselves. And I mean, I'm not afraid to admit it because because I think people should know what's going on, but they just. I, I just think, yeah, sure. Like the performing arts aspect of it all is like, yeah, oh, we're going to war, rah, rah, rah. but it's like, I gotta, I gotta go to bed. I gotta close my eyes at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, yeah, and and war is expensive, and war is is messy and lengthy. You know, yeah, and just luckily, that's that's the one reason you keep the publicity going is because you let people see that, and they are so generous. We have people in your chat that have donated over thousand dollars. Some of these people to my legal funds. It's like. I'm indebted to them, but they understand and have been with me and understand how wrong this has all been. So, you know, you know, and it's nice to fight for the good guys. You know, it's nice to root for the, for the, for the, for the good guys and the heroes in, in the story. Have you ever seen a story that was so one-sided from the audience? No. <laughs> I mean, it's what, just like, if anything, the only people that are annoyed by this story are the, are the casual people that come back and they go, this is still going on, you know. Yeah, you're like, still talking about this shit. Yeah, like a week, a month later, huh? Really? This? And it's like, I know, I, I know. We thought it was, uh, we thought, we thought that we put, we thought the fire was put out, and then all of a sudden it rages back. Well, and and now, I mean, it's gone on so long and so involved that I was on another stream last night, my time. I guess it'd be morning your time, and they were asking me to summarize this in a few in a few sentences. I'm like, no, you can't. You just can't. There's so much going on here. Uh, where, where do we get here? Uh, Lou, hey, what's up, little miss? How's how's the little girl doing? No more. Uh, what's that you say? Encore, encore. <laughs> yeah, no more. Encore. Bring it on. And Pastor Flash. Wow, you get the foghorn. You get the fifty dollars. I came in like I'm not going to sing this. I came in like a wrecking ball. I never hit so hard in love. All I wanted was to break your walls. All you ever did was wreck me. Yeah, you. You wreck me now. Sing it. No, not gonna sing it. Uh, because I literally don't know any of the melody other than I came in like a wrecking ball. I assume it's just like the same thing. I, I never, never had to hit, hit so hard, hard in love. love. Yeah, I'm assuming All it's pretty I wanted repetitive. Was to break your walls. All you ever did was wreck me. Yeah, yeah, you. 
you rag me. Yeah, I figured it was pretty much repetitive on the on the melody because I don't remember hearing any other melody than, than that part. So I wasn't wrong. By the way, someone said my voice sounds depressed. Uh, it's just I'm trying to be quiet and not, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to yell and my wife gets all, you know, excited. It's late. Well, it's late. Yeah, it's, it's late. It's tired. It's exhausted. He's yes. being quiet. And Little Miss again. Thank you, sir. My shunned family, the app. I hope that's not actually called my shunned family. <laughs> that is so weird. There's like an app to talk to your family members is monitored by the court. That's sad. That's why, that's why I don't practice family law. I handled one divorce in my life and I'm like, oh my God, there's like 30 years old people acting like they're three. I cannot do this. You I just wanted it. to slap both of them. Yeah. And MDD, MDD VTV again. Says, DC doesn't like being lied to. Huh. Interesting choice of client, if that's how he feels. Huh, interesting. <laughs> exactly. And I'm still waiting for that withdrawal. Uh, you know, these, well, so phrasing, I guess. But yeah, um, I don't know how this July 23rd thing is not being lied to by his client. I don't know. Does Dave have a GoFundMe? We support you, Dave. I do. And I don't know where it is, but... Um... You know what? Just listen to my podcast. That's the best way to support me. But thank you so much. I I, I raised all the money. You're the worst grifter ever. I raised all the money <laughs> I needed for the GoFundMe. In fact, they might have they might have stopped it. But now that now that this new lawyer started emailing me, I had to rehire my old lawyer. So I'm happy to spend the money to not have to deal with it because it's like, let's delegate to people like I not my battle of fight. Not not you know let my lawyer handle it, but. Yeah, you're you're a terrible grifter. Yeah, I got a GoFundMe. I don't know what it is or where it's at, or I don't even know if it's still going. But yeah, I got one. <laughs> well, they were so kind. I mean, they they um they raised more funds for me than they did for Clayton. Um, which is you know, I mean, it's just a testament to how loyal YouTube audiences are. Like, no offense to Clayton, he didn't spend years building up his audience. He kind of when you get it from the Bachelor, it it comes quick and it goes fast. And um, so, we, hey, yeah, that's what I heard. Um, phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> comes quick and leaves fast uh so we've been told uh yeah. put, that in, put that in the evidence um but uh, yeah, Tosh, you, you need as much sleep as you can get before the baby before baby neil gets here how much longer do we have we're like three weeks out yeah wow so yeah. it could it could literally be any minute it could i hope not we are not ready we we tomorrow we're putting the go bag together so yeah, we're we're. Uh, I don't want to hear it from all the ladies in the audience. They get, oh, how do you not have the go bag? I, I'm so I'll order some stuff on Amazon. What you know, I'll Postmates it from the hospital bed. We're trying our best. Yeah, it's like Korea here in Korea. I mean, the, the the mass transit is so good. There's taxis, buses, and subways and trains that go literally anywhere. Taxis are dirt cheap here, and so I I I just never felt the need. I had a motorcycle, but I didn't feel the need to have a car. That was our that was our big baby prepared. I'm not taking a taxi to the delivery room. Go buy a car. I'm like, all right. I know. Well, I'm like, I come on, honey. I got a new Tesla. I'm not trying to get, you know, amniotic fluid on the seats. Can we we we've got uh, those little dog pee pads we're gonna put down? But yeah. no, I mean, we're she's my wife. She's wrapping in she's, saran wrap. She's been amazing, but now she's got some bad acid reflux and it's it's starting to hit. I mean, yeah. when the kid pushes, like he'll kick and punch. He's doing like multiple. Th he's basically like on a wrecking ball in in her belly right now. Yeah, it's starting to look like the scene from Alien. You can just like see, see like pushing up. Like, oh my god, the head's gonna come out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, good for you. This, the next three weeks, literally, it could be any minute now. It's gonna be when you're least prepared. Uh, there was something else here. I never packed a bag ahead of time. Uh, but there's something here. I can't find all right dang it yep nope can't find it there was something there's nothing i wanted to come back oh yeah <laughs> avid reader red x is, is july 23rd date the worst typo ever <laughs> it, it could be you you think you would have tweeted a like a fix for that at this point how bizarre I mean, how do you say here is a picture of of my ravioli and marinara sauce on July 23rd but yet you file for parental shit on August 1st well she believed she was still pregnant she just didn't yeah. go to any doctors after having a miscarriage but she's like here are the two lumps that prove I'm not pregnant now I'm going to go sue because I still think I'm pregnant 
It's insane. Well, she would literally like, have to be. I feel like I've been living in a dream. You know, because early on, you know, you do get gaslighted and you start to go, well, what if Clayton's some monster and she's telling the truth? And then no discovery, no fetal DNA. No, 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 nothing. Uh, baby bump this. You go, oh, my gosh. And you just have to keep on. You know, it's almost it's like we weren't betting on Clayton being right because we all supported him. People think because I cover Bachelor Nation news, I'm just going to support the Bachelor guy. Go back mm -hmm. to video number one. I was like, I don't want to believe this. Uh, and then we got more information and it started going in his direction after day two. Um, but yeah, it's not some sort of a uh, home field advantage that he has here. Yeah. And, and I mean, for me as well, I do this with pretty much everything I cover. It's like, I really don't care about the interpersonal actions between the people involved. I like the legal side of it. And you know, this, the, the, the legal back and forth and the arguments and the, the behavior of the lawyers and things is, is the fascinating part of this. If I don't, you know, really, I don't care if he did it or not. And it doesn't affect my world one way or the other. Just who is proving what in court and how they're proving or not proving is fascinating. So, you know, yeah. I don't care how it turns out, just the process is bewildering in this case. Bewildering indeed. You didn't support Colton when he stalked Cassie. I have no idea what that means. Oh, but well, that's how my channel took off. Yeah, no, it's a good example. Colton Underwood was a bachelor who put a tracking device under the trunk of her, his ex-girlfriend's car. Mm. And my channel went viral because we exposed him and read all of the text messages he was sending. It was the exact opposite of Clayton. We followed the evidence and we exposed this guy. Absolutely. Um, plenty of bachelor people we've called out for their PPP scams. It's not my, I don't, I don't judge them too much. I'm not like a cancel culture guy. I'm just like, well, this is what so-and-so is doing. And my mm -hmm. audience is so smart. They're so compassionate, kind. The fact that she got away with this for a day just goes to show that they wanted to give her so much grace. But yeah. women, you know what? They, they tell you they got that intuition and that just did not pass the sniff test after one day it just none none of none of it lined up and i knew as soon as i started to see these quotes taken out of context i'm not a big stickler for all the evidence but show me a full screen grab at least mm -hmm. none of it and then and then and then it blew up and then of course when she redacted the fact that they only had oral sex uh we go oh okay he only got a blowjob twice that's all it was okay yeah it, it went from was it we had intimate relations or something like that i think it was her first she intimate still, encounter she still or never said they had sex yeah she still has not said it because she knows it didn't happen yeah and then, then it went to uh i got some of some of your man juice down down under to it was intercourse to it was great yeah come on youtube let us say the words You're, it's, it's almost demeaning if you don't let us say the word uh but yeah it, it's it's bizarre how all this is playing out in the court and i think it's fascinating it's very very just the social construct of this whole thing is so weird yeah i mean you just wonder like what's next i mean she's she's tried everything under the book to stop me including, you know, emailing the FBI and emailing the district attorneys and accusing me of revenge porn. It's like she's kind of already tried it all. And luckily, I've just built up like you do some equity with my audience that they know that that's not true. And I'm luckily like, never met her. <laughs> no, and I mean, it's right. What you're saying is like, there, there are those times you go, am I the crazy one in this in this picture? Am I the only one that's not getting this? And that's probably the that's the that's the weirdest part is when you start going, am I the crazy one in this picture? Yeah, you you think about it. You definitely you definitely, and I think that's what a smart person does. A smart person audits themselves consistently and goes, wait, did I go too far? And then and then you go, no, no, I didn't. I'm continuing to say things one thing at a time that I believe to be true based on all of the evidence I have seen and evidence I haven't seen. She's so busy trying to get me to prove things when she's not proving anything herself. Yeah. You just got to do like the, like, like the movie Memento and just start tattooing notes all over your body so you can make sure you, they're still actually happening. Wild. 
<laughs> here, let's see what. Let's see how this wraps up here. This is a. This is the the grand finale here. Uh, this that dishonesty is what caused the breakdown in communication between the undersigned and Mister Woodnick. This has nothing to do with any social media comments, and it has nothing to do with the timing of Ms. Owens' compliance with the order compelling disclosure. The problem is the undersigned counsel does not like being lied to, and neither should this court. Here, the breakdown in communication occurred immediately after undersigned counsel brought these issues up and asked for an explanation. Rather than explaining himself, Mr. Woodnick simply clammed up and refused to respond. That is perhaps an admission of guilt. Damn. Why provide an explanation when you don't have one? Well, holy fuck. Uh, Kettle, you're black, says the pot. Good Lord. Dude, How? this is the most self-unaware person I have ever seen in my life. Dude, it's look at your client and repeat that phrase to your client. Wow. Oh, to summarize, to summarize my seven-page screed that has nothing to do with any screed is we need to bring back screed. To summarize, as explained above, undersigned counsel believes Mr. Woodnick lied to this court. S believes, not lie. Before he said lied, now he says believes he lied. And he did so for the express purpose of trying to gain a tactical advantage in this case. Sorry if that's harsh. He writes like he talks. And that bothers the shit out of me. There's written speech and there's spoken speech, and they're they're different. So you can even like sorry that's sorry if it's like you're harshing on me, man. Sorry if that's harsh, but it is what the facts conclusively show. Undersigned counsel admits being upset about this. Any lawyer who cares about justice would be. Willful dishonesty has no place in this profession. Really, he wrote that. Can we get a camera on the judge while she reads this? That, seriously can we do that can we put that on patreon just wow she must i mean her husband must get an earful i would love to listen to that conversation she needs to have like a gtfo stamp she can just stamp on documents that are instead of like denied thing just gtfo I mean, what signed percentage of her workload is this case one percent i mean there must be a lot of just like daily things but there must not be too many that are like constantly as big as yeah. this, right? On a day-to-day -day basis like this is going. This is... And can I just... This, is, just a, this yeah, is what ahead. really annoys me, is that Gingras said, you know, in one of the emails I shared earlier today, he said basically, like, how are you going to have nine experts? You're not even going to have time for any of them. And it's almost like he knows it's going to be so short that he's relying on his client to just stumble through a couple things and then it's over. And this mm -hmm. is the long version. What are the odds? I mean, could a judge be like, you know what? This is complicated. Let's make it the full day. Could that happen? Probably not the full day. Cause there's other things on the docket that they probably wouldn't delay it. but you can say, well, let's, let's come back next week or in two weeks and finish this. She could very easily do that. It'd be nice if all the other things in the docket were like, we'll come back later if you could just take Yeah, <laughs> we want to watch. Just keep we'll talking. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting good. I don't want to just cut this off. The finale is around the corner. But I like the idea of having the, the nine experts there because then you can just go, all right, Judge, which, which, which guy do you want to talk to? Which me, one do you want to hear from? Let me tell you something. I've had experts contact me. I'm talking about the heads of medical departments at Ivy League universities. I'm talking about experts of experts. Uh, it is wild the type of people that have come out of the woodwork here that want justice. And that's the type of stuff that makes me feel less crazy. When I get 30 emails a day from different lawyers and from different medical people. And I mean, I even check this out. I got an email from someone today or yesterday. They go, they go, Dave, this is going to be disgusting, but you asked for this. They, they explained how they had a miss had a period that was big, that they thought it was a miscarriage. And they, they went through all the descriptions of it. And I was like, well, I, I did ask for that because if she claims miscarriage at like four or five, six weeks to a lot of people, they might've thought that was a period or, you know, and it could be, you know, her photos of a miscarriage could be a period. Like mm -hmm. at some point it's like, what do you, you don't even know what you're looking at until a certain level. So it's just amazing. The crowdsourcing of knowledge that's come out of it. Someone sent me their HCG test from their pregnancy off the mm -hmm. charts. And it's just like, yeah, these experts that are out there can see right through this bullshit. And I think, um, 
I think if you've had a baby, I'm sure the judge has, or if you've ever even been trying to have a baby, you just find it so offensive because you know how like fragile, like the, the mm -hmm. uh, sort of cradling is when you're trying to get a, 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 a fetus from conception to birth. And it's just enraging, enraging. Well, and then I mean, it just it gets multiplied when you start connecting the dots to see how ridiculous it is. So let, let's say it was a particularly clumpy, heavy flow. That still means she wasn't pregnant. She either had a miscarriage and wasn't pregnant or she's still having periods and she's not pregnant. But at the very least, we know if she was pregnant and did have a, a bloody discharge, you would be in the doctor's office yeah. that day, the next day. And none of that happened. And likely flat on your back for the next seven months. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> and I'm not involved in any way. I'm I'm getting frustrated and I have zero to do with this. And how flippantly she's willing to just toy with human lives. I'll oh, yeah. kill these babies. I will take the pill if you'll date me, if I can give you a hand job after watching the movies, you know. Take me to Applebee's and I'll get rid of these things. What? Like I'm pro choice. I'm pro do it your body. And that, and, and yet it's still a delicate situation and it's a delicate conversation. Mm -hmm. And she is cat all over that. Ugh. The un, under these circumstances, undersigned council believes his strongly worded remarks to Mr. Woodnick were fully justified and appropriate. At the same time, we still have to, we still have a case to resolve and there is still much to discuss. So long, so long as that remains the case, undersigned counsel has no choice but to put his anger and disappointment aside for now. But not threatening. You'll know. You'll know if he's threatening you, Dave. He's he's threatening <laughs> threats. I'll throw. I'll threaten to threat you. You just wait <laughs> and move forward as best he can. To move forward, the lawyers must talk. Dot dot dot. Not because they want to, but because the rules require them to. No problem can be solved without the parties talking to each other. For that reason, this court should follow Judge Gaines's wise example and require the lawyers to talk. No, 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 no. See, he did not. See, that's where I think he made the fatal mistake, if there is a fatal mistake. I can easily see the judge ordering the two people to talk. So, okay, you, you know, sit down, find a time, and sit down and talk. He made a specific motion for the court to order them to have lunch. And I can see the court, the court going, denied. I'm not going to order him to have lunch with you. If you want to file another motion uh, requesting that I order you just to sit down and talk, fine, I'll consider that. But I, I would think the judge would go, I'm not ordering you guys to have lunch. Motion denied. Yeah. I mean, I know nothing about it other than it's just silly. Uh, I mean, and I think the judge would deny that maybe on the optics just because it is very... I don't know. It's just very yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 bullying, but it's like clearly there's so much hostility that it's like at this point, you know, it should uh, they're all their conversations should be in front of the judge. It seems. And see, that's how, that's how I would be the judge. I, you know, I'm, you, you don't get something that you don't ask for and you get what you ask for. And this is where he specifically asked for an order compelling them to have lunch. Now, and did he tweet this or something? Is that why we have yes. this? Yeah, he tweeted this out. See, I'm not going about his, him. I'm not going on his Twitter. I don't. I don't need it. My audience is. I'll gonna, email it to you. Thank you. No, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not even gonna. I'm, I'll just direct people to your page here. But um, you're doing great work. So what's that, what's it like on Saturday? Is it nice? It's a beautiful sunny day. We've got the dog basking in the sun over there. Oh, beautiful. And uh, I'm gonna take him out to the beach here as soon as we as soon as, soon as we're finished and oh, get beautiful. all the get all the attention from. Walking the two little bulldogs around. So conclusion should compel the motion to compel lunch should be granted. Uh, I would say no. It doesn't need to be granted. Close all tabs. Go away. Uh, well, we, gotta, we we do have a couple of super chats. Be David's friend here. I think he just wants a friend. Yeah. Where's Where's Yoda? Oh, Yoda's probably on the sleeping on the sofa. AK the cat lady. The two dollars. Does Dave have a GoFundMe? We support you, Dave. Oh, we already did that one. He, he does, but he doesn't know where it is. Uh, okay, okay, then you didn't support her. Uh, unhung hero. Her lawyer needs to sack up and quit. Discharge sacks. Yeah, send photos of the sacking up. <laughs> and oh no, Julio, oh, you've done it. Ju Julio is 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 has has caused me to caused me grief here. Uh, 
Gay Colton. He is from near where I live, Washington, Illinois, maybe. That's the guy. He came out, and you can watch that on Netflix. He was mm. rewarded by stalking his ex with getting a Netflix show. I stopped watching after the Chris Sewell season or Soul season. Hey, sister season, Soul sister season. Whatever. Now we've got a thing here. Um, uh, Julie O has you, you get to you get to witness some horrifying stuff here because Julie O put us over the the second un achievement we unlocked today, which is my congratulatory thankful shot of Korea's first homegrown, home manufactured, home distilled, home bottled, barreled, and aged single malt whiskey. Wow. It ain't good. <laughs> okay. Check back in, a, in about 10 years, but it's it's not good. It's Gi Won, Korean single malt whiskey made from real Korean barley, raised in Korean fields, distilled in Korea, barreled in Korea, and aged in Korea. I have to do a shot of this every time we unlike, unleash the... And it's, God, what time is it? It's 12. Okay, it's 1 p.m. I don't feel too guilty, but it, just, it smells like propane and gasoline. It's great. It has, has, you know, it's I can little, almost smell it right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it kind of smells like a cat box uh, with some gasoline put on it. What camera do you have on the dog? Um, it's just my little webcam. You got a little dog oh, cam nice. there. What's up, little squish face? You're looking so over here now. What device are you using to have multiple cameras? Uh, just StreamYard. You can, there's an uh, in stream. Oh, we lost him. Oh, it's just me. Well, I feel like I've got control of the whole country right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we lost Law Vice. Litigious Vices is gone, aka Legal Vice. That's All right. Oh, I was taking control of everything. I got nervous. I heard that. Yeah, there's a people know about the I have this stupid gaming mouse that has this weird button on the left that if you press it, it goes back to the last stream. I mean, uh, the last screen. It goes. I could just go to the settings and disable it, but that would be far too easy. I thought I took over your channel for a second. I was, I was going to put a hat on and go, you know, start training. You were, you were asking something. I can't remember what it was before. I oh, it was tech. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. the uh, That's what I, that's what caused me to move my phone, which, which touched the left mouse button. And in StreamYard, there's a present button, and then there's an extra camera button. You can click on the extra camera, and it'll let you hook in an extra camera. I got to start using StreamYard. Yeah, it's easy. It's 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 basic. It's idiot proof. It's definitely a lowest common denominator thing, which is why I use it. But oh, let's get this out of the way. Julie, oh, this is all your fault. Thanks, everybody. She lied. <laughs> that is not good. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, and I drank all my water. I, I did have to live with it. Oh. As someone who is a whiskey aficionado and loves whiskey, that ain't good. Whew. <clears throat> All right. Oh, God. And it's on a like, totally empty stomach after last night. <sighs> Hair of the dog. All right. <laughs> so what's – is? I mean, I guess this is the latest, but uh, is there anything that's happened between – the response and the response to the response that I'm not aware of. Cause I was, I was doing the response and then I was going to go into all of the, you know, the, the opposing counsel should be, should be disciplined by the bar. And to support that, I'm going to reveal that my previous lawyer, she actually left because I complained about her. Uh, you know. I mean, we're just confused as to what his sort of strategy is. And again, it's not my real place to, to care, but it's just, I'm curious. I'm curious. Like, is he just trying to ruffle as many feathers or does he get a bonus if he can, gets Woodnick to lose his mind and drop this whole thing? Um, I think you pronounced boner wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's not I mean, a bonus. It's a boner. It, it's, I think it's just an ego thing. Look at me. I'm being famous because I, I almost met Johnny Depp once. Yeah. And, 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 and I represented a comedian that's not nearly as funny as Dave Neal. Oh, shucks. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, don't know what I don't want to anger this man. I feel like um, I've, I feel like I've got a, a dad who's I'm walking on eggshells around here. Please don't threaten me with another hundred and fifty million dollar lawsuit. I'm trying to set up my baby's bassinet. Please. Can you just let me try to cover this thing? And of course, the biggest a beef that he had other than like the petty stuff is that I'm not covering it fairly. I'm reading everything he's writing and we've given Jane every platform she's asked for to share her side of the story. 
don't get mad at me that her story doesn't line up. That's not my fault that her story changes yeah. often. Often. That's that's very kind of you to use the word often, not continuously. Yeah, I mean, it's like I like I I, I thought of it. I was auditing myself. I go, where where have I been accused? Where have I been caught lying? And the only times I've lied was by omission when I'm a codependent and not trying to piss somebody off. No, I had COVID. I couldn't go to your birthday party. <laughs> I actually blew off someone's birthday party tonight. If they see me on this live stream, I'm going to tell them I uh, you know I broke my ankle or something. I don't know. I mean, like I'm just like just, I'm just a limp off stream. <laughs> <laughs> hobble away i mean I, i'm a people pleaser uh, that's that's that was but no but no no malicious no none of that i just don't think so um but well and then when you do you go eh, my bad sorry eh. yeah you don't keep it going for a year yeah i had a guy i used to know in college that was a um pathological liar like he would just steal things and then deny it and then he would just get caught red-handed and I guess we just can't, you just can't um, put your put your normal brain in the head of somebody that maybe in 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 part of it's like a I think a like an intelligence thing. She definitely thinks she's smarter than everybody. Um, I remember she would send she sent me an email. Oh, back in the good old days um, when she was still <laughs> suing me the first time, and she sent me an email being like "You're not even a good reporter. My mom's a better reporter than you could ever be." Type of deal. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> Like you're, 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 you're doing this IQ measuring contest with the wrong person. That's in my world. That doesn't matter. Not none of like, I'm, I'm all, I I'd, I'd rather trade in her intelligence for my hard work and doing it, you know, doing it the right way, which is not having your parents sort of um, fund you from the back of the house type of deal, whatever. I mean, I, I do feel for her. I'm just at this point, I'm losing grace quickly because um, you know, I mean, we've, I've got some tricks up my sleeve, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to try to get victims to speak out, um, yeah. privately and I'm putting my pleas in, you know, just saying, Hey, the more people that can share their truth, not fabrications, but their truth and realize that it affects the greater good. Um, the more, the more they'll be appreciated, you know, and we'll see what happens. And I would like to think that maybe they're just kind of waiting to see how all of this washes out before they, they do the uh, hashtag me too stuff. Yeah. I mean, cause I, I mean, I wouldn't wade into this if I was them at this point either, but if it goes, if it goes in the Clayton's favor, which I mean, how does it not? <laughs> then I think maybe they'll be more willing to come out and tell their side once it's, once it's been resolved. I hope so. But at the same time, I mean, who knows? You know, we just live in a world where people, everyone looks out for themselves. And sometimes you just need to explain to people how this, this is still affecting more people and, re and put them in the place. And remember how no one believed you. Remember how you had to tell your mom this and your dad that, and you, and people still looked at you. Yeah, remember that feeling. Other men are going through that right now. So your help in yeah. sharing. And again, I have, you know, we have sources in every aspect of this story, and I understand how 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 hard it is for people to want to come out because it puts them back in the line of fire. It reopens wounds. These are people that are dads now. They have families. They they, they don't want to go back to the shame they felt from all of this. But but you know, you know, yeah, you gotta you gotta end it. You gotta end it. And Denise W says Dave does have a GoFundMe. Dave Neal's legal fund. <laughs> Our chat will help you remember where your where your GoFundMe is. Oh, thanks, Denise. I love Denise. No, my GoFundMe. Let me double check and see if it's on my link tree still. I might and have taken it down. Ju Julio, I think Dave needs to talk to the therapist Theo Vaughn. <laughs> I've been trying to get on Theo Vaughn's podcast to talk about this. Absolutely. Oh, that would be. I I I would literally pay good money to see that. Oh well, yeah, my my thing still is up there. Linktree.com slash Dave Neal. The Barbara Wawa podcast making Strickland cry. Oh, I see. I I I, I like Theo in in the way that I like uh, people like Woodnick and and other and other good wordsmiths. People that you know, I I know every word that they say, but I would never in a million years think to put them in that order. That's jazz, that. right? That's jazz. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to rearrange these notes and paint outside yeah. the lines. 
I, I would love to see you on, on, on Theo Vaughn's pod. That would, I, that I would know be his gold. producer. And it's, it's one of those things there's, I mean, I was putting a plea out today to go on Megan Kelly or Patrick David, yeah. uh, the, any of these people, I don't care. I, I don't care if I have different political, like I, I, I do not care what their political leanings are. I know mine and I want to share my story and this story. And I don't have to line up with everybody to do that. Uh, we're, we're, we're welcoming to anybody who wants to be involved at this point. Yeah, this is not a political thing. This, yeah, this is doesn't matter. This is a this is a justice and a, and a, and a legal thing, not a political thing at yeah. all. Yep. And uh, Dave, Dave Neal, I have an idea. Says Tina. If <laughs> maybe if if you make like five to ten minute rundown of this entire case, if possible, bigger media people like Megan will be willing to watch and see if how, what how could you possibly contain this into like a five minute uh, reel or something. How would you do it? I can't. I mean, I've made uh, five, six hundred, eight hundred hours of this. I, d I don't know. It's not my strong suit. And the best I can tell people is go watch my Caitlin Bristow interview. I laid it out for her in a two and a half hour interview. I laid out the whole timeline for her. And um, we did it in at her uh, studio, which is where Sean Johnson, the Olympic gold medalist, it's her it's her home studio. We did it super high quality video. So if anyone wants to share that with anybody else that might uh, be interested, just it's not a five minute thing. Put it on, put it on and go when, on your next road trip and listen to it. It's a long I, burn. I think you might need to do that, though. Somehow distill it down into a five, five to seven minute thing. Because you know, Megan Kelly's not going to give you two and a half hours. I hear that, yeah. But I don't know how you would do that. You go go with God. I have no idea how you would distill this down. I I would almost need somebody to write me a script that that can be a three minute thing because I I uh, the thing that makes me me is 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 like the color that I add around the facts and and yeah it's and by doing short content like that it strips away what I do. But I've tried. It's just my brain doesn't work that way. Well, any any time so I I hate trying to describe this case to people because anytime I do, I get about three minutes in, and then I notice that they're just they're looking at me like this. And I try to explain it to my neighbor when we we're out to dinner, and I was like, <laughs> I'm sounding crazy, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> they're just looking at you like, what are you talking about, you fucking weirdo? <laughs> but yeah. uh, I'm gonna know, someone in the comments was asking for the link to my GoFundMe. Just hold off on that. Yeah. I don't need I don't need their money right now. But if people just keep on supporting uh, the podcast and the Patreon mm -hmm. and all that, that's just the best thing right now. And if the time comes where we need to pull the trigger again for for a new court battle, we'll do that. But I'm good right now. Thank you guys. And it, uh oh, but boats boots on the ground says Dave Neal lied to me. He said if I didn't give him certain information, he was having the babies. <laughs> okay. That's 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 rather explicit and weird, but okay. Uh, Dave Neal, you can use pregnancy and the baby as an excuse now. Oh yeah, that's a you're going to use that one a lot. I can't, I can't, the baby. You know, I got to got to yeah. take care of the wife. Yeah, you're the baby. Sorry, I can't go out and have meaningless interaction with other humans. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I have a child. I'm with child. Yeah, I, I'm. Hell, my kid's 23 years old and lives in another continent. And I still ah, the kids. You know, got to talk to my son. He needs my attention. I can't go out. <laughs> The AK the cat lady says we need to add Malort to Vice's drinking options. No, we don't. Uh, thank God that's not available. That swill is not available here. Bruce from Oregon says I'd rather listen to a novice explain good evidence versus a professional running a scam. There you go. We love Bruce. Bruce Tim is the moderator. Oh well, the, he he speaks with wisdom. You have a oh, wise sure moderator. Does. Not that my hey, mods, you guys are wise too, really. Uh, here's how you do it for Megan Kelly. Innocent man accused of pregnancy after fellatio, then spends a year dragging him through through court with fake medical records. She covered Johnny Depp. I'm going to screen grab what she just wrote because that's perfect. <laughs> that's literally, <laughs> I'm just going to tweet that. You need to get Nancy Grace on this. The whore! She's an evil woman! She's trying. You know, this is like this is the one time I would support Nancy. Well, of course, Nancy Grace would probably be against Clayton just because she's Nancy Grace. I hate that woman. But uh, yeah, there. <laughs> we we just need a summary, says Tina. I can try to come up with one. Maybe see what Chat GPT comes. Should we see what Chat GPT comes up with? Please. I I know they. We'll probably have to use Copilot because Chat GPT doesn't like person specific things. 
Uh, ask me anything. Let's ask this. Write a two-minute summary of the, see if it'll do this, Laura Owens. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Dave, close your ears. I said her name. Uh, <laughs> and Clayton Eckert. She lied? It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a two word summary. <laughs> and Clayton Eckerd, uh, legal battle. Here's a concise summary of the legal battle between Laura Owens and Clayton Eckerd. Uh, Laura Ann Owens, known for her alleged abuse of the legal system, has been this is this is this is chat. This is this co-pilot. This is <laughs> doing this, not me. Known for her alleged abuse of the legal system, has been involved in multiple court cases against men she has sexual encounters with. Her tactics include claiming abuse and feigning pregnancies when these men express disinterest in pursuing further relationships with her. One such legal battle is with Clayton Eckerd, an American television personality. Their connection began when Laura solicited Clayton to be her real estate agent in May 2023. After a brief acquaintance, they engaged in an encounter that involved oral sex. When Clayton decided not to pursue a relationship, uh, Owens claimed she was pregnant with twins from their oral sex encounter. Oh, it's footnoted, justiceforclayton.com. However, recent developments indicate that the accuser has withdrawn the legal action against Clayton Eckerd from bing.com. And for, for more detailed information, you can refer to public court documents here at monstersandcritics.com. Oh, PJ wow. Media. No, it's just linked to PJ Media. Oh, no, it's linked to, sorry, it's linked to uh, Justice for Clayton and PJ Media and Monsters and Critics.com get a special mention. Wow, that's a pretty decent summary. She's going to send a cease and desist to artificial intelligence. Yeah. Now. AI, I'm suing you. AI, you're sued. <laughs> Bruce, even AI isn't falling for petitioner scams. <laughs> even AI is against her. AI is like, you can't fool us. We're not humans. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oral sex is too generic. It could mean Clay performing on her. Well, hey, you know. Hey, that's one way to do it. It could have happened. Oh, well. Well, we, we've hit the three-hour mark, and I'm not going 72 hours again this week. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to go for another six and a half hours. Uh, Dave. What's going on next other than having a child? Well, I've got a podcast to upload tonight for tomorrow, and I'm going to be recording another one tomorrow. Uh, and um, I'm just I'm just banking a lot of content. Um, so when the baby comes, I'll just have it ready to go. And um, I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I have to be sentimental. And just whenever I have an audience and just tell everybody how grateful I am for them, for you. And I truly feel you meg tug are guardian angels and therapists and emotional support dogs to me you guys came out of nowhere in my life and i don't think i'd still be covering this case if it weren't for all of the guidance so thank you so much well i mean you're you're, you're doing you're doing a difficult job here i mean you're 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 on the forefront you're on the front lines of this Wow, we were alone for a long time, and then y'all came in like, oh, it, you know, once you guys got wind of this, it, it truly was a sigh of relief. So thank you. I remember Megan's text coming at 2.30 one morning going, oh, my God, oh, my God, you've got to read this. Oh, my God, look at this. And I'm like, what the hell? And that's that sort of started it all. And then she got on, on Tug, and she told him about it. And, but, yeah, I mean, you're, you're on the front line. This is something you're dealing with. And so, I mean, you're doing – you're doing you're doing the, uh, the, the you're fighting the good fight here. I'll We're tell you what, my audience is just I'm lucky because when Clayton needed money fast, they donated. That's why I get a little upset when I'm like, I don't know if people give enough credit to the initial investors that donated. They got Woodnick on this case fast. And Woodnick probably saw, oh, there's some life here. We can pursue this. It's not just going to be rape out, excuse me, grape allegations and all these things in private. Like there's actually some payoff if we can expose this publicly. So the only thing I did was have a little bit of a flashlight and start to look at all the cockroaches and then everyone came in. So my platform, I've been lucky enough to slowly build it. And for the audience to stick around, it has been just so refreshing. Well, and I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of what what we do, you know, Tug, Megan, and I, we we just try to make things a little, see the, the humor in terrible, terrible situations and just 
because there's there's so much horrific stuff out there. When you get something like this, you can at least, from our perspective, find a little humor in it and maybe maybe lighten the mood a little bit. Sure, kind of helps everybody involved, unless you're like the one we're making fun of. Then, well, you know, matter. comedy it's it's got multiple purposes. One one is one purpose of comedy is to shame people and to uh, to shame them by laughing at how stupid they are and that has been accomplished here and i don't like to shame people that don't deserve it or that apologize you know it, it, there's there's a you don't want the wrecking ball to swing too far past the target but in this case she keeps dodging the wrecking ball but i think um i think this is the first time she's probably ever been made made held accountable um for for what's going on and it's thanks to people you know breathing life into it well, th th thanks for trusting us with the story because you, you're you're very helpful yourself. Of course, I'm an idiot. I know nothing, and I'm I've been a sponge soaking up all of this info. I much prefer telling my jokes on stage and you know uh, covering breakups and makeups. This is way above my pay grade, but um, you know you learn quickly when you're in the L L.A. Superior Court system, when the FBI is uh, questioning. If you've committed revenge porn, you quickly, you quickly look at your rights. Well, I, I do, are you are you familiar with Nick Ricada? Yes, just, yeah. just, that, just, that's where that's where Megan's going. Megan's going now, so you get another potential half a million subscribers that are going to be come join. Going to be watching this. Come join the tribe. You know, maybe I'm I'm considering. You've got such great character and style. I'm I'm now considering growing my mustache out and becoming you, you for Halloween. You, you, you should. And I, this, this this was just a this was a COVID thing. I, I mean, I've always had the beard mustache. I'm lazy and I hate shaving. That's yeah. why they did this. But during COVID, it was buying a mask for three years. I thought let's just let it go, and then it just kind of became a. Thing. Women don't understand the lengths men will go to grow a mustache in the compliments because we know how hard it is. I feel like the mustache to the man is a good eyebrow to the woman mm. because it, that, that doesn't point. come easily. And I respect it in you. It's powerful. You know, there was an article that I read once. I had a bit about this. It, it, so it was, it was when I had long hair, I said, um, I read an article that men with long hair have better intuition. I know it's true because I didn't read the article. I just kind of felt it. And um, there's truth behind that that um, the natives grew out their hair because it helped with their intuition. And I feel like hmm. the mustache kind of has that. There's like a sixth sense happening there. You'd, you'd look good with you'd look good with a nice thick stash. Oh, I got photos. Yeah. I'll share photos with you one day. I've got, I've got them. Hey, you'd look good. You, you need like the, like the, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? You just need like, you know, like the big, like the, like not the actual man bun, but like the, the I could put my hair in a man bun if I wanted to the, the wave back look. My, my mustache grows in racist. That's the only problem. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't come off hipster. It comes off like uh, not the way you want it to. And I go, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I broke that. And all of a sudden I'm. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the word I was looking for. The hipster look. Yeah, but just, yeah. If you start wearing flannel shirts with suspenders and I'll, I'll beat you. Yeah, I'll make you a nice, um, a nice uh, 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 new cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's, we're going to send everybody over to Nick Ricada right now, where Megan Fox is going to be on to talk about this very subject. So, which pretty much means they're never going to get to the subject, but <laughs> we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Dave, you're a champ, man. Seriously, brother. Thank you for popping well, on in. Thanks, um, thanks for having me. And thanks to everybody for, um, you know, sticking with it. I appreciate everyone out there. And we'll, we'll continue to, to fight the good fight and to uh, expose, so to speak, the, uh, the injustice or justice in the system as it comes. And June 10th is the big day. Motion to compel you to go to the beach. Yeah, I'm, I'm heading right there with the doggos as we speak. Thanks for being here, Dave. Appreciate it. Go, 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 go snuggle up next to the wife and kid. John, good night. Take care. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye-bye. All right, guys, let's go on over to Nick Ricada. Mods, thank you so much for being here. You guys are champs. You're, you're super, super awesome people. And everybody here in chat, you are also super awesome people. I didn't look at the, I didn't even look at the chat, the uh, the poll today. Let's see how our poll wind up. What is going on? 23% of you said no clue. 39% of you, the, the winning answer is justice for Clayton is going on here. 7% said the tonsil twins are real to me, damn it. And 31% say stop the insanity. That's the end of the, oh, no, I guess, uh, yeah, justice for Clayton won. 
That's what's going on here. And that's the that's the end of the poll. And thank you so much for the support you guys gave. Deeply, deeply appreciated. Thank you for just being here in chat, keeping Dave and Megan and myself entertained, keeping each other entertained, and providing providing the backbone. The chat, you guys really need to understand that if there's not a chat, there's really no reason to be doing this. The chat is the backbone of any good stream. You guys hold it together. You hold all the insides in the right order. You keep everything together. Couldn't do it without you. Wouldn't want to do it without you. You guys are awesome. Let's go on over to Nick. Maybe has, has Nick even started yet? He always starts like 487 hours later. Uh, nope. It's uh, it's 120 and he still hasn't started his 1 p.m. stream. But let's go on over there anyway. And you can join the 377 people that are already waiting for it to start. All 732 of you, go on over there. Tell them Legal Vices sent you. And if you, you should get automatically sent over there. If you don't, then go click on the little blue box that's going to come up on the top of chat that says, hey, something's happening over at Arcata Law. Go check it out. And uh, if you that doesn't work, just search for Arcata Law and join it manually. And on the way out, we have LA member for four months. Uh, Nylee is right. This is perfect for Emily D. Baker. Law nerds alert. Alert her. Dave, you're, you're the uh, same kind, fun guy I remember from PHS band. Oh, damn. Um, that's a that's that's something that should have been read when he was here. Dang it! I'm so sorry he missed that. I will I will send that to him so that he knows that uh, that I got it. And thank you for being a member for four months. Let's on go on over to Ricada. I'll see you on Monday for a Maritime Monday. I said I was going to talk about the Baltimore Bridge disaster, but I just realized that this Monday, actual Maritime Monday, is the anniversary of the Titanic sinking. Um, so I'm going to go back on my word saying I would never cover the Titanic, and we'll talk about the Titanic for a little bit. So that's Maritime Monday, Titanic, probably Hales Tuesday, and uh, more Tonsil Twins Wednesday. That's looking what next like what next week is going to shape up to be. See y'all later. Have a great, great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. I'm going to listen to Arcata and walk the dogs. Love you guys. And bye. That's the starting one. We don't want the starting one. We want the ending one. And Bye.